Hello, friends. Welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Welcome to a very special episode celebrating 15,000 YouTube subscribers. That's 15,000 people that all clicked a button. That's insane. <laughs> well, hello, friends, and welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Oh, hello, friends, and welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. We're going to grow our coding skills one day. Gonna be a lot of fun um <laughs> so i streamed a lot this past week and uh sunday i was definitely feeling it but today i feel refreshed feel energized i've got fifteen thousand subscribers so that's awesome um let's say hello to ev everyone haro uh, boyan welcome to the stream yo baskin welcome it's party time says daniel uh thank you wesson for the congratulations yo brandon welcome thank you cassandra from the <laughs> for the congrats welcome to the stream uh the coding cat hello welcome uh harsh says congratulations it was great to be part of this journey absolutely every single one like all of you people that are watching right now you you did this this is you not me you did this <laughs> uh thank you rabbit works uh thank you josh thank you joe uh he says if you wins please do the view composition api um so as you can see in the title of the video um i sent out a poll where you can vote on what i should build um, I do realize that I have a couple of lingering projects, uh, specifically like the Snap Garden React Maps app and the Feathers Chat front end, but I wanted to do something that I can do in one video, one stream, I'll do it, it'll be done, we won't have to think about it again, so please vote uh, at the poll here. Um, yeah, so if you vote, we'll decide what to build. And if I do choose Vue All, I will use the Composition API. And if we do use React, I will use uh, Hooks. So you can be sure of that. Hello, Alka, welcome to the stream. Uh, Brian says, you deserve it. I learned so much from you. You are truly the best coding teacher out there. I appreciate that. There are, there are other good ones too, but I appreciate that. Uh, thank you, Alfred. Hello, Oliver, it's been so long. Welcome, you're here for the 15K celebration. That's awesome. Uh, I go crazy on that little guitar thing. It's a, a ukulele. <laughs> uh, oh, you missed my ukulele performance? Uh, you, you can always rewind. Do a solo. Hello, Jan. Welcome to the stream. Hello, Elia. Uh, hello, Willy Lump Lump. <laughs> he says, I told you, CJ, you're going to hit 20 to 30,000 subs before the year end. Maybe? I, it's, I mean, it's, this is a long time coming. So uh, I think it was about a year and a half ago that I celebrated my 1,000 subscriber celebration. I mean, that, that technically is pretty pretty quick growth, uh, but still, it takes time. It takes takes a lot of people to pass by this channel to decide and click on that YouTube subscribe button. <laughs> More distortion. Hello, Flosuit. Welcome to the stream. Uh, thank you, Jason. Hello, Andreas. Welcome. Uh, <laughs> it's been way too long since the last musical intro. I did a few this past week, but I don't know. And hello, Merchan. Welcome to the stream. Hello, Elia. Oh, Coding Train, Dan. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, honestly, I, I have to thank Dan and the Coding Train uh, for having me on his stream a while back, because uh, that's where a ton of all the viewers came from. So I really, really appreciate it, Dan. Thank you so much. Um, hi. Hey. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> so th this is the regular expression I'm using to... Um, to show the greetings here. That's really funny. Um, yes. Uh, hello, Pingju. Uh, welcome to the stream. Hello, Fernando. Uh, La Cucaracha. I, could, I, don't, I don't know that on ukulele. I could play it on uh, on guitar, or can I? I don't know. Uh, thank you, Kmerk, for the congratulations. Uh, yes, so the, there's a clickable link in the chat. There's also a clickable link in the description if you do want to vote on the poll. Hello, Jonathan. Welcome to the stream. Uh, Sylvia says, congrats. You deserve this and more. Thank you so much. Um, Boyan is saying, what does the HTML code button on your chat manager do? If some, <laughs> I probably shouldn't mention it, but if someone tries to, uh, submit, uh, something that might tempt, attempt to render the HTML, I can click this button 
and I'll view the source of their message. So it was happening a lot that people were trying to like cross-site script me and then the message would just show up as blank, but I can click this button and it'll show me what they actually put in. And in this case, you literally just put in the text. What is the HTML code button on the chat manager do? Hello, Brooke Zerker, welcome to the stream. Hello, Ahmed, welcome. Uh, this is gonna be fun. So uh, let's see how the poll is doing. Oh, wow. Uh, CRUD client with view is only winning by one vote. And in second place is a web scraping API to generate embeddable site previews. Um, I feel like, I don't know if I coded this on stream at some point, but this, this is something that's fun to do. Essentially, um, you will scrape a web page and pull out all of the meta tags and um, basically create information about that specific link. It's what a lot of things are doing whenever you, you post a link in um, Discord or in Slack and it shows you all the information, There's, it, we would essentially be building something like that. And we can make a web page where um, you submit a link and it um, could generate like an HTML snippet that you could just copy and paste somewhere to get the embed. So that, that might be fun. Uh, for these CRUD clients, um, I looked at like all of my top videos and some of my top videos on my channel are all about building uh, CRUD applications or CRUD UIs. Um, so I thought that that would be fun to do, especially if we choose view, we could use, use the new composition API. The poll is on fire. <laughs> um, yeah, cool. So we're here, we're doing it. I also thought um, if we do choose one of these uh, CRUD thingies, uh, we could build a very, very simple CRUD API with feathers. I thought of making like a an NPM package where you can just type one command and you instantly get a CRUD API. I don't know. It looks like it might win. Should we just call it? Should we call it that CRUD client UI with view is the winner? Let me know. I'm gonna sip my tea, which just steeped. Stepped, steeped. This is um, lavender chamomile tea. <laughs> I, I, I realized that I have to be very careful with my voice. So um, this past week, I streamed so much. So like Friday, I streamed for five hours. Saturday, Alka and I streamed for um, like over six hours. And by the end of it all, uh, my throat was, and my voice was was gone. So I need to take care of it. I've been drinking a lot of tea and, and keeping my, my, my vocal cords in check. Uh, you should do a crud with you. <laughs> Um, okay, so this, that's what this button is for. So if I click this button, we can see that Jan attempted to insert a script here. Very good. <laughs> Very good. Hello, Sylvia. Let's do this. Hello, Mattia. Welcome. View, view. Uh, no feathers, please. Vanilla JS. The thing is, if, if I were to build a, uh, a backend API, I couldn't do that instantly with vanilla. I mean, I could do it, but that would be a, a stream in itself. Um, I mean, it's a tie. It's a tie between CRUD and a web scraping API. We need, we need more, we need more votes. <laughs> uh, if your T starts stepping, you will know that's true. <laughs> and hello, uh, pre, pre cap, precepts, welcome. A web scraping API would be really interesting. It's been a while since we did some web scraping on this channel. Um, I feel like that's what brought a lot of people to this channel. Like some of the web scraping, early web scraping videos that I did. Feathers and Nuxt, <laughs> um, I don't know if I could do that in a single stream because I've never done it before, but it's a good suggestion. <laughs> Web scraping, no view. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, I won't mention it. There's, there's, there's another little special thing that I added to this chat UI that if someone attempts to do something, we'll see it happen one day. <laughs> Web scraping, um, how does this isn't a real question? Mm. So uh, the, the questions um, thing over here is if I click this button, it saves it and it'll put it over there. Right now I'm not detecting like if a message is a question, um, that's, that's the next thing that I should do. <laughs> web scraping, quick, make a GraphQL API for web scraping with a CRUD front end. <laughs> yeah, Jan's got it. You probably looked at the, the source. Uh, for uh, the live chat manager on GitHub, but yeah. Um, Got to have all the technologies. Basically, I mean, that then it becomes more of like a clickbait video, clickbait title, just like put all the JavaScript frameworks in the title and people will watch it. Hello, Chris, welcome. Uh, do web scraping. I don't think Vue 3 has directives yet. Um, directives? Well, I wouldn't use Vue 3. I would still use Vue 2, but I would use the composition API plugin. Hello, Geo, welcome. 
Web scraping with Trio. That's the plan. Hello, Jake. Uh, I love you. Pite me. I don't know what this means, but hello. <laughs> uh, uh, Brooksucker says, so I have to wait for my question injection attack. Yes. And we'll probably use like natural language processing to detect questions, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, yeah, so the, yeah, the plan was to use the view 2 with the, the CLI. <laughs> I should try using this old gym. Oh, yeah, that's what I did a long time ago. So this is the, the CRUD API. Goes way back. Um, the product CRUD API that I built, and then I had a couple of videos where I built a front end using this API. I could. It's a definite possibility. Uh, Jay Carter is asking, why do I like Java more than C++? Uh, it's a personal preference. You know, it's a thing. <laughs> Everyday Code says, congrats, awesome channel, more subs on the way. I appreciate it. All right, let's see what uh, Shrep System tried to send. URL to a file which does not exist and the on error alert. So uh, cross-site scripting 101. Um, if you're attempting to see if a website is vulnerable to cross-site scripting, typically this is something that you do. You send an image and you put an on error tag because the browser will essentially run this JavaScript um, if it actually does render the image. So that's that's a classic way to check if something is uh, vulnerable to cross-site scripting. Uh, <laughs> the Rick Astley link gets spoiled. Is that a new feature? Uh, it is. Uh, and it, I mean, it has to be the most popular Rickroll video. Uh, web scraping is winning. All right, we'll probably do web scraping. That's always fun. Uh, Matias says, my web scraping and undocumented APIs are one of my favorites. The last one blew my mind. Um, for the web, oh, the... So that was actually a noob quest. Uh, if you go to coding.garden slash videos, um, uh, yeah, and look at noob quest. That was this one, I think. I think that's the one that you're talking about. Essentially, we scraped all of the menu items from allmenus.com for like all the websites in the Columbus, Ohio area. We put all of those menu items in a database and that then allowed us to search restaurants by menu item, which is something you can sort of do it like on Yelp and maybe some of the food ordering apps, but it was super sweet to say, I want a chicken sandwich. What restaurants have a chicken sandwich? What's the price? Um, all that good stuff. Yeah, that, that one was super cool. <laughs> I can use the composition API with Vue too. What even is a CRUD API? So CRUD stands for create, read, update, and delete. Typically most APIs that you interact with our, um, our CRUD APIs, create, read, update, delete. So essentially we would build a user interface where you could list all the things, you could click on a thing and view the individual thing, you could click edit and change the details of that individual thing. Um, and so that's create, read, update, and then you could also delete a thing. Yeah. I've uh, been doing Laravel for the better half of the last decade, starting to get in the JavaScript world. There's so much, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot in JavaScript, the JavaScript world. There we go. All right, I think we're going to get into this. I think we're going to build a web scraping API. Uh, Cheddar says, come on, guys, let's vote for Svelte. We've done web scraping so many times. How could he do it in, now that he could do it in his sleep? I get pretty, like, most of, most of the things I do on this channel are, I do so often that I probably could do in my sleep, but yeah. Uh, yeah, the very first web scraping video on my YouTube channel was scraping IMDB and creating a, a JSON a web API out of it. That was, like, my third or fourth live stream, maybe my second or third live stream. It was very early. Uh, Watcher is saying, I originally found you from your cat Twitter video, loved your clear explanation and coding, keep on going. While we're going down memory lane, uh, if you take a look at meower.now.sh, this is a website, I built this uh, on the coding train, I was a guest on the coding train, thank you again, Dan, and this website is still live. So many people have tried to flood it with requests to do like cross-site scripting, but you can see like even, even today, people have been adding messages. So they see that YouTube video, they go here and they can still use it, which is crazy. Uh, super, super crazy. This thing still works. You could just scroll for days. Like all these recent messages are just people that watch the YouTube video and are adding their own messages. Yeah. Hello, hello from Arizona at my company engineering and tech offsite. Oh, very cool. Is it, um, what's that place called in Arizona? The capital of Arizona? I don't know. I'm gonna have to Google it. <laughs> Ariz oh, Phoenix, Phoenix. Are you in Phoenix? And hello, Ryan. Welcome. <laughs> uh, the first video Matias saw was that IMDB one. But of course you've watched them all. Wow, that's a lot, it's a lot of videos. Um, a golden oldie and fun to check every now and then, yeah. All right, let's see what Majestic Eye sent. An SVG, ooh, very good. So um, this, this tool that I have here does actually render SVGs, but uh, I'm using a library that strips out any, any attributes like that. So close, very close. 
first person to cross-site script me, uh, <laughs> uh, get some stickers. Oh, and, and check it out, check it out. I have some super awesome stickers. Uh, I might actually do a sticker giveaway on this stream. But I don't know if you can see these. Okay, you see that they're holographic. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come closer to the camera. It's a holographic coding garden sticker. <laughs> So uh, I have a bunch of these, and I'm going to send these out. Um, and um, I also have some holographic JavaScript stickers, which I'm going to send out as well. Show these. Ooh. <laughs> Um, and so that's that's like the the super uh, holographic one, um, and then these are like inverted holographic. So they're black, but the JavaScript part is is holographic. You can see that? Yeah. So uh, announcement incoming. I am going to be sending out some sticker packs. Basically, if you are a um, if you're a patron, you're going to get a sticker pack. <laughs> um, and I'll probably do a stream where we can build a website to submit user info and like the first, I don't know, 20 or 30 people are gonna get a sticker pack. The other stickers I have are, um, are these. You can't really tell. So it's the, it's the new Coding Garden logo, but they're, um, they're, they're made out of like an epoxy. So it's almost like it's a button, but it's still a sticker. I don't know, good stuff, good stuff. <laughs> oh, just outside of Phoenix, cool. Uh, test, so. This is an anchor tag that has an href, which I guess goes to a base64 image. Very interesting. <laughs> um, how do I submit a noob quest? I could only search. I, I don't really have any way to submit things. Um, I will say if you go to uh, github.com slash coding garden slash landscaping, um, you can open an issue here. I will say I haven't checked this in a long time, but the, the purpose of this repo is for people to submit ideas for things for me to do. So you could definitely check out this. I'll send that. Uh, giving away stickers because there's no room on my laptop. Um, thank you, Mattia. Thank you, Vegas. Yeah, and really, if you if you can, yeah, there is a stream suggestions channel on Discord as well. Ahmed says plus one for giveaways. Well, I think we'll do it. I think we'll wait for like critical mass, maybe in an hour or so. That's usually when like the viewers peak, and uh, we'll do a giveaway. Thank you. Uh, so I used uh, StickerApp.com, and I also got some stickers made on um, what do you call it? Uh, Redbubble. Giving away stickers because there's no room on my laptop. So the thing is, I refresh the stickers on my laptop like every three or four months. It's a thing I do. Right on. Thank you, Alvin. Uh, I like the new icons in the chat manager. Oh, thank you. Yeah, these are the material icons. Before I was using like emoji buttons. And thank you for the follow Xstrap system developer. Oh, the base64 was a script alert. Interesting. Does that work in the browser? Like can, you can set a base64 string that has code inside of it? Very interesting. Okay, what's winning? It's it's the web scraping API. All right, we might as well go ahead and get set up, or at least create a to-do of, of how we're gonna do this thing. Um, so, need, I need new terminal. Um, so, let's make a directory. Uh, we're gonna call this, what do we call this? So, um, it's um, a site preview generator creates embeddable things. It's not, it's not em embeddly, because that's already a thing. How about embedder? You know what, we'll just call it link preview. <laughs> we'll come up with a better name, uh, better name later. Um, oh, I'm using a new VS Code theme too, check this out. Link preview. Um, this theme is called uh, One Dark Raincoat. I don't know, I like I like it. I wanna make some tweaks to it. So it's not final yet, but once it's final, I'll post all my uh, my style updates. Uh, thanks for the follow, Azerbaijan. I appreciate it. An input with autofocus, an on focus alert. All right, let's see if it triggers an alert. It doesn't. <laughs> uh, Im embedder, oh, you know, embedder, like B-E-T-T-E-R, because it's better. <laughs> yeah, there we go, embedder. Uh, the name of the theme is One Dark Raincoat. Um, so if you look at uh, BS Code Extensions and search for, it's actually not that popular. Um, a friend of mine rep recommended it. Uh, 
One dark rain coat. This one. I'll share it. Um, I did some slight adjustments because I do like to have like a solid black uh, background. Um, so I, I adjusted it slightly. Dash better? BTR. Mbutter. Mbutter. <laughs> Uh, so the the other chats are coming from YouTube. So I'm actually streaming to both YouTube and Twitch at the same time. Um, so this UI lets me see uh, both of them. Yeah. It's an M character? Dash is an N dash. Oh, I, didn't, I mean, I didn't know it was stood for that. M, M dash? Huh. Huh. Can you Can you start a GitHub repo name with a dash? New. You can. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> We're going to call it Embedder. Um, did you just, yeah, dash BTR? Yeah, why not? Let's do it. <laughs> uh, today we are going to build a web scraping API to generate embeddable site previews. Uh, let me just update the, um, the YouTube title. Uh, to remove that link because we've we've decided. Uh, actually, I'll update the title to actually be um, build a web scraping API to generate embeddable. Embeddable has two Ds. Previews. Em embeddable. Oh, you know what? I sp uh, maybe embeddable is not really a word. Oh well. <laughs> there we go. And I'll update the Twitch title too. Uh, edit. Done. Title should have been updated. Cool. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> uh, it is about to get more popular. Um, what is? I don't know what that's in reference to. Um, he just saying, I know React. Do I need? Uh, do I expend time to learn Gatsby or Next.js and why? Um, we'll save that question for later, but it's a good question. Always go back to Material UI. Yeah. All right. What do we got? Majestic Eye. Ah. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I used to have uh, links uh, disabled on Twitch Twitch chat, and when I did, this would actually show show the images. Um, because Twitch wouldn't detect that as a link, but yeah. Majestic Eye is going to win those stickers. <laughs> That's good. Uh, your terminal theme is compatible with Ubuntu. Uh, yeah, yeah, because I'm, uh, I'm using just Bash. So if you take a look at my dot .files, um, they haven't been updated in a while, but you can see my Bash profile, um, and it just has a few colors for how things should show up. Um, and then, um, yeah, so that would... I would do it. Web scraping, embedded instead of embeddable. Yeah, well, it's it is embeddable. It can be embedded, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, and that's a good point for uh, what, what Matias is saying. So, in terms of this question, it really depends. Like, do you need search engine optimization or not? Um, Alka is saying, I'm watching someone else who allows HTML on their overlay, and they have a permission system for different levels of access. Some of their chatters can write JavaScript, and everyone can write divs with inline style. <gasps> That's really cool. <laughs> I mean, we could do that. So, I mean, uh, Alka and I are working on a, uh, a chatbot. Um, you could potentially have a user system as well, and users have different uh, permissions. Yeah, that's super awesome. Okay, so uh, first, let's rename this folder. Uh, move link preview to embedder. <laughs> embedder. Oh, it doesn't like that. <laughs> uh, I'm stuck. I can't get in the directory. <laughs> what, do, what do I need to type? Dash BTR. I mean, usually it's a slash, right? To escape the character. You know what? I mean, I think I think we're stuck here. We can't even get into the directory that I just created. <laughs> Somebody help me. What's the what's the command to get into that di that directory? 
Uh, Brian is asking, can you use request promise with async await? Absolutely. So um, async, um, what do you call it? Async await just works with promises. So the fact that request promise returns a promise means you can use async await with it. Uh, with no escape? I think I tried. Did I not try that? Invalid option. <laughs> Thank you, Ran, and welcome. Uh, points to be allowed to post one selected attribute or tag. Yeah, I'm about it. Uh, thank you, Danielle, for the congratulations. Um, I'm curious why this didn't work. Oh, because you put markdown inside of HTML. Yeah, so I do have a markdown renderer. Um, if you didn't put the HTML tags, it would render uh, the markdown. Okay, so uh, we're at a loss here. <laughs> so let's make a new directory called embedder. <laughs> uh. That's that's hilarious. Um, yeah, we're gonna open code here. <laughs> New file, <laughs> readme.md. So this is embedder. A web scraping API to generate website previews. To do. Get that to do going in a second. Oh, cd dash dash space dash better. Would that work? This is a fun little challenge. How to like get into the directory? <laughs> hey, Merit Chern's got it. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna not do that though because that's pretty inconvenient. So we're gonna call it embedder. The repo name will be. You know what? The thing is, if somebody clones this down, it's gonna name the directory dash better too. Um, we're gonna go with non special <laughs> non special characters. Open the console in the directory directly. Like open a finder window and right click open console. Uh, or uh, yeah, I guess I could have done dot slash. Let's try that. Hey, Mary Chant, you got the you got the Linux skills. Very good, very good. I think that would have done it too, Jan. I, I j essentially just having the dash dash like it passes the command into the command before it. So yeah. Uh, thank you, Alan, for the congrats. All right, let's make a to-do list. So uh, the first thing that we need to do is uh, set up <laughs> a uh, npm project. So we'll, we'll npm init it, and we'll install dependencies. Um, so the dependencies we are going to use. So uh, we could just use node fetch. Though lately, I've been liking using Axios. The thing about fetch is it doesn't have built-in error handling, so we have to handle that ourselves, whereas Axios does have error handling, so if the status code isn't 200, it'll throw it into the catch. So I think we're going to use Axios. Um, so Axios will be the thing we use to request the web page. Um, and then we will use a library called Cheerio, which is essentially jQuery on the server side. So it will allow us to inspect this HTML we got back and extract out all the things that we want and need. Um, we might use something like a Puppeteer. Puppeteer, puppeteer. Um, and so I don't know if that's the right way to spell it, but let's just look it up really quick. So this is a, a library from Google um, that is a headless Chrome. So it essentially will spin up a headless Chrome and navigate to a web page. Now, technically, you could just use this for scraping, but it has a bit more overhead because it actually has to render the page inside of a browser, whereas if you're using Axios, you can just directly request the source of the web page. But if we want to take a screenshot of the web page, something like Puppeteer would be the way to go. Um, yeah, so generate screenshots and PDFs of pages. I think we'll, we might consider that a stretch goal. So like if the page doesn't have any images in their meta tags, we'll use uh, Puppeteer to uh, generate images of the web page. We'll do that as a stretch. Use Puppeteer to take a snapshot of the web page. Cool. Okay, so after we have our dependencies, um, Oh, and actually, we'll we'll just do like a basic Express app too. So we're gonna use Express, but we can have like one endpoint where you can send it a URL and it'll give you back the JSON. But then we can build a very basic front end where it can hit that endpoint and then generate some HTML that you can copy and paste. So we'll do that on the back end. We'll install all the middlewares that we need as well. Um, and then from there, um, set up Express app with all our middlewares and our 
pretty much just one route for scraping. Um, and then scrape. That's about it. <laughs> those, are, those are the steps. <laughs> Hello, coding room. Welcome to the stream. Hello, Brandon. Welcome. Uh, Qu Brandon says, coincidentally, I'm going to work on a web scraper tonight and get to get NFL scores for my side project. Couldn't find a free API. That's unfortunate. But, I mean, I'm sure, like, NFL.com has scores. This might be a case for undocumented APIs. Okay, quick quick detour. NFL.com. I don't know. Is this the right website? I don't I don't NFL. <laughs> is we're going to do? We're going to look at the network tab. We're going to look at XHR, and we're going to refresh the page. So, when this web page loads... Um, it makes it makes queries. See, so look at this. The API has an undoc. The NFL has an undocumented API. So if we take a look at, I don't know what are what are these things doing. This is a request to. Um, it's passing in like the objects that it wants. What did this get back? Nothing. This gets back our configuration of like what channels to show. Um, this has. Let's see. Getting some stuff. I'm sure we're gonna find an endpoint in here that gives us back scores. Let's see. Data, viewer, league, current, week, season. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna go through all of this, but I bet I bet Brandon, if you if you look through these these things, you will find an endpoint that you're looking for. And and it, it probably doesn't support cores. So like if you look at the res oh my goodness, it has access control allow origin star. You could technically just build a front end and hit this API directly. There you go. Two seconds. Two seconds. <laughs> uh, you haven't missed anything, Orlando. We just created a to-do, but we're about to start coding. Puppeteer requires more power. Um, yeah, So, and that's the thing. Like, Depending on where you deploy it, it may not have access to headless Chrome, which is why I like to keep things as simple as possible. Uh, developer, no, my MacBook doesn't have a mechanical keyboard. I have a mechanical keyboard right here. Um, if you do a uh, bang keyboard, uh, you can see the keyboard that I have. Um, it's, it's a super cheap, super basic uh, mechanical keyboard, but I like it. Uh, Amin is asking, why don't developers recommend using Node.js for high traffic purpose websites, like shopping websites that hung in back Black Friday sales and stuff? You know what? They do. I don't know, I don't know where you heard that, but um, walmart.com has uh, a team called Walmart Labs, and they actually use Node.js. They're actually the creators of a, a library called HappyJS. Uh, there's a really good episode, it might be of JavaScript Jabber, or there's there's like a podcast that's specific, I think, to node development. But the entire um, Walmart Labs Black Friday team was being interviewed on there, and they basically talked about how they kept the Walmart website up during Black Friday um, on a website that was running Node.js. So check that out. Hello, Ishmaki. Welcome to the stream. Uh, on the Git route, you should do plain text API instructions. Yeah, I, I think that's yeah, that's what I want to do. So on Slash, um, we'll have a, like basic API documentations, documentation. So um, basic docs on the root, and a, a basic HTML embeddable generator on the root. Yeah. Um, how can I benchmark different functions? We'll save that question for later. I haven't really done any benchmarking, but there, there are tools out there that will help you. There are actually tools built into Chrome that will help you too. Uh, passes back nothing. Sounds like an incomplete pass. It's <laughs> pretty good. Uh, what if the page has login protected page in the past? I use Puppeteer when this happens. I use some, is there some way of doing it with Axios? It, it depends. So if, if it requires login, Usually when you click that login button, it's going to make a post request somewhere. So if you can inspect the network traffic and see where that post request is going, you can emulate that to get back the resulting cookie and then use that cookie in a subsequent request. But it's definitely possible. Uh, you're welcome, developer. Okay, uh, let's get started. So in our directory here, uh, and better, um, I'm just gonna make a directory called server. We may create a separate client. I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put all the stuff in server. Um, cool. And here I will do an npm init dash y. That's gonna create a package JSON, and then I need all my dependencies. So I'm gonna install Express. Uh, we're gonna install cores. So, well, actually, yeah, we'll install cores. That way, when I publish this API, any any front end could use it. Uh, we'll install Helmet because it's easy enough. Why not? 
Uh, we'll install Morgan, which is a uh, debug logger. Uh, and then we'll have Axios and Cheerio. Go. Uh, Majestic Eye says, did some research on Dom Purify. It looks like my dreams of winning the sticker are in vain. It's a pretty legit sanitizer. Yeah, so the thing is, uh, and someone mentioned this like the first day that I was using it. Um, if you can hack this site, you've basically found a zero day for Dom Purify. And you could probably get some money for that. <laughs> so um, let's just look up Dom Purify really quick. But yeah, it's a really popular library. Um, it has thousands of stars, 4,000 stars. Um, and it's very well maintained. And they stop so many different things. <laughs> and I think they do have a, um, what is it called? A responsible disclosure. So like if you find a vulnerability in it, they have a place that you can go to. Um, to report that, let's see, security goals and the threat model. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they have like responsible disclosure somewhere, but yeah, it's something to look into. Uh, we are going to use JavaScript for all of this stuff. Ooh, a rate limiter. Yeah, why not? Um, you know what, I'll, I'll add that as stretch, but I think it's good to have, especially if this is like a public API. Um, but I mean, we'll, we'll probably have time to get to it. Rate limiter. Rate limiter? Limiter. Lim limiter? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, Majexa sa says they have a, a link that's pretty interesting on someone finding a zero day but can't post it. That's okay. Yeah, don't post it. <laughs> uh, yeah, mainly doing JavaScript. Bypassing DOM purify with MXSS. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, how am I getting the dark theme on GitHub? So I use a tool, uh, an extension called uh, Stylus, which is this little thing right here. Um, it's a replacement for Stylish. Don't install Stylish. Stylish tracks all of your browsing habits. Stylus is an open source fork of it. Um, but then once you have that installed, you can go to userstyles.org and people have contributed styles for all sorts of websites. So I have web, um, things installed for uh, GitHub. There's a GitHub dark theme that you can install. Yeah, I saw this last time on stream. Their, their search isn't that great, but this is the one I use, uh, GitHub Dark 2.0. Um, yeah, but they have all kinds of themes. You can install them, and then they're activated for that specific website. And you can also create your own custom Dark themes. Hello, Jesus. Welcome back. Jesus was uh, with us on the Fun with Phil stream, and he kept us going. He was he was there till the end cheering us on. We did it. Uh, okay, there we go. No no double letters. I appreciate that, Amen. There we go. Yep. Oh, uh, there's. They have it for Firefox too. Uh, it's called Stylus. You should. You should be able to see it. Search for my Twitch Fixer 2019. Oh, is that uh, a style on style on uh, user styles? Twitch Fixer 2019. Twitch Dash Fixer. Twitch Fixer. I'm telling you, their their search is not very good. Search for Twitch. Night mode, dark theme. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Chris is saying you can use the compose middleware package to handle in uh, one file with middlewares. I've never used that package before, um, but I'm I'm okay with just uh, just straight up uh, adding the middlewares. But let's let's take a look. Compose an array of middlewares. That's kind of nice because you can just pass it um, an array of middlewares and it instantly adds them. Cool. <laughs> uh, the, the official name is Fix Twitch Redesign 2019 Dark Mode. Let's just search DuckDuckGo for it. Oh man, DuckDuckGo, come on. What about Google? There we go. I'm seeing all kinds of ads. <laughs> and there it is. It's from Yane. Very cool. I like it. Should I install it? Not going to install it, but very cool. Um, I'm learning the web after C of years of C++ and C. JavaScript has many varieties, it seems. Am I wrong or right there? Um, JavaScript, um, I mean, there, yes, you're going to come across a lot of different, I mean, ultimately, there's one specification the, the, that most things will implement, which is the ECMAScript specification. Um, and if you take a look at, uh, I think there's the CanGax compatibility table. You can see what different JavaScript engines support. So um, 
ECMAScript 6, also known as ES2015, was one of the major releases of JavaScript. It introduced a ton of new features, and most things are, are implementing that support. But once they did that, the TC39 committee, like the, well, that, that's redundant. Technical Committee 39, which is the group that actually uh, standardizes JavaScript, um, they decided that every year they're going to release a new specification with, with additional features. So there's ES 2016, 2017, 2018, and it just varies how much support you have on, in any given place. This website will show you like what supports the latest features. Um, so there's that. And also there's just a lot of code floating around that is old and outdated, but yeah. But you should really just start with JavaScript, that like JavaScript that your browser will understand, or JavaScript that Node.js will understand, um, because there's also things like TypeScript. CoffeeScript isn't as popular anymore, but these are languages that will transpile down to JavaScript. JSX transpiles down to JavaScript, but I would just stick with JavaScript. Uh, let's build a front end for stylish Kappa. I don't know what uh, I don't know what that is, and I have not used Laravel or Voyager. Cool. Uh, don't we call it ES Next now? Sure, yeah. <laughs> I'm used to saying ES 2015. <laughs> okay, so um, I ran the install. If we look in the server folder, we now have a package JSON that has all of those dependencies. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and install a linter as well. Um, let's see. So I'm going to install this as a development dependency, and ESLint is a really cool tool that makes sure that we write uh, code that is consistent. So I'm gonna set it up so that I always have semicolons or like it, it forces me to always use semicolons, uh, will force me to do various certain things. So I'm gonna do um, npx eslint dash dash init. It's gonna ask me some questions. I want to check syntax, find problems, and force style. Uh, we are going to use, uh, or we are using requires and exports because we're in Node. We're not using React or Vue. Uh, we're not using TypeScript. We're running in Node. And I'm gonna use the Airbnb style guide. And this is also going to install the Airbnb plugin, which has a bunch of uh, predefined rules. Uh, Anish says, want to shout out to my boy. By the way, CJ, thank you for inspiring all of us. You're very welcome. Very welcome. Uh, is the year thing still a thing? I'm pretty sure each, each year is technically like ES 2018, ES 2019. But, I mean, because it's happening so often, you can just call it ES Next. Um, but they still technically have versions. This link? Where does it go? Uh, data, text. Okay. You know, first, <laughs> first, I'm going to decode the base64 string just to see what it's going to do. I guess, I'm guessing it's like a JavaScript alert. Um, is A to B what I want or B to A? B to A. No. It's saying this isn't valid base64. Oh, I put a, I put a, um, Put that on there. Yeah, so um, inside of this base64 encoded string is a script that will alert XSX, XSS. Let's see if it works. So technically, if this works, it doesn't work. <laughs> um, but if it did, that's still a form of cross-site scripting. It just requires some user interaction, which is interesting. Hello, Dat Sparrow. Welcome to the stream. Focus on plain JavaScript. There you go. Oh, okay. Click it. <laughs> I tried. It didn't work. <laughs> Uh, we are about, like, we're just getting into it. So we're setting up the project, and hello, Raul, welcome to the stream. Um, so we're, um, we just set up our project, and I will absolutely explain, like, what is web scraping. But essentially, we are going to be extracting information from web pages on the internet. Um, okay, so we have our setup that generated the ESLint, which has our default rules. Um, in here, I'm going to create a folder called source, which is where all my code is going to go. Um, I'm going to create a new file, call it index.js. This is where I will create my Express app. So uh, we set things up. We installed our dependencies. Now let's get a basic Express app going. So first thing is we'll bring in Express. Uh, then we'll bring in all of those middleware packages that we installed. So we'll bring in uh, Morgan, which is our logger. Uh, we will bring in uh, cores, which will uh, allow us to make requests from different origins uh, on the client. Uh, we'll also bring in Helmet, which is a nice little package for automatically adding some secure headers uh, and enabling some secure headers on our app. So we'll create an Express app. Then we'll use all of these middleware. So I'll say app.use, 
first thing I'll use is the logger. Um, and we'll use, you know what? We might use combined. I think that's the most, most verbose. It says like the time a request was coming in, I believe, and like what the method was and how long it took. Uh, we'll use a helmet and we'll use course. Cool. Um, do I need a dotty and V? I don't think I'm gonna have any secrets. So yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna install a dot env, but let's create a port variable. It's gonna be process.env.port or um one three three seven. <laughs> uh, and then we'll say uh, app listen and we'll pass in uh, the port and we get a callback. And we can just say um listening on HTTP colon slash slash localhost and then uh, the port. Uh, just like that. Ooh, is the ESLint isn't working? Oh, it's doing that thing where I'm in a nested folder. You know what? Let's just put the readme in the server folder. I don't think I don't think we're gonna need any other folder. We'll we'll, we'll be good here. So uh, let's do this. We're gonna do some command line foo. We need that server folder to be this embedder folder. Um, so <laughs> let's do um, move server slash star. We're gonna do it recursively to right here. Go. Illegal option R. Can I do R dash R? Nope. Maybe I don't need a flag. Is it going to get nested directories? Looks like it did. If we go in server, there's nothing there. Cool. Uh, and then we have, if we open this with code, now we have all of it in the root. There we go. And um, looks like ESLint is potentially working. I think it's working. If I leave off a semicolon, there we go. We get an error. Very cool. <laughs> so this is our basic express app. It's just going to start up. It's going to do absolutely nothing but just start listening on a port. Uh, and so in our package JSON, we can add a start script. So right here, we'll say um, when this app starts up, uh, we want to say node source slash index.js. And uh, our main is source slash index.js. So if we say npm start, we should get listening on 1337. There we go, we have an express app. We haven't added any routes, so it doesn't know what to do, but we have an express app. Oh no! I just closed Chrome. <laughs> Give me a second. Whoa, whoa, that's me. That's me up close. Actually, let's uh, let's fix this. There we are. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> uh, actually, I mean, that's, that's a little bit better, you know? Nice and up close and personal. <laughs> I, so with Chrome, you can you can set it up so that it doesn't automatically close if you accidentally do a command a command Q, but I don't have that set up. You can you can have it to like confirm. So I accidentally press command Q and we we just lost uh lost Chrome, but it's back. If you give me one second. <laughs> do 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 do. Well, hi there, says Brooks. We're, we're almost there. Almost there. Hello. Oh, hello. Press command key. That's, that's me. Uh, pop out the chat. There we go. And we're back. Okay, <laughs> let's catch up. Uh, CJ getting hacked in three, two, one. It didn't work. It didn't work. No, I didn't rage quit. I just accidentally, <laughs> accidentally pressed command Q. Um, Hello, Patrick. Uh, had to catch up because I was cooking. Yeah, I mean, we haven't done too much. I've done a whole lot of chatting and saying hello to everyone who's congratulating me and stuff, but we set up our basic express app. We installed some dependencies. We installed a linter. We got our basic express app uh, going here, uh, and we have a to-do of what we need to do. So, you know. Uh, Patrick says, congrats on the 15. Project's good. We, we're, we're set up. We're ready to start doing some stuff. Uh, yes, DOM Purify is for cross-site scripting protection. That's what I'm using on, on this page here. Yeah, 15,000 subs, new VS Code theme, who dis? Hello, Shvetlana. Uh, like I, I said it at the beginning, I just I just uh, installed this theme like yesterday, 
I think I like it. There's some tweaks I want to make. Like the highlight color, I think, isn't the best. Let's actually just change that really quick. Um, open up my settings JSON. I think I can do, I don't know, what if I search for um, high line highlight background? Let's set it to be like lime green. Oh no, <laughs> that's 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 horrible. That's not that's not what I want. <laughs> um, highlight. Oh no, it's a uh, it's select, isn't it? I want to search for select. Oh, I can't find it. And now we have like a weird green green background. There we go. <laughs> we'll fix that later. Uh, that's not true, uh, Kitsuna. You know that. Um, your or is drunk? What? Port fifteen thousand. Oh, I think that's uh, that's out of the port range. <laughs> so if you type TypeScript, uh, so if TypeScript tr transpiles to JavaScript, what's the point of TypeScript? Is it just syntactic sugar? So TypeScript gives you uh, compile time type errors, uh, which JavaScript doesn't give you. So yeah. Uh, where did my ESLint RC go? Oh no, that's so true. <laughs> it was it was a hidden file, and I didn't copy it. I think that means we need to generate it again. Let's just generate it again. It's okay. Whew. We're do we're doing it. Uh, things are happening. Uh, nope. Nope. Um, Airbnb JavaScript. You shouldn't need to install that because it's already there. Okay. Um, there we go. Because now we're getting like a console log warning. Oh no, not that. Cool. Thank you. I, <laughs> I totally forgot. <laughs> uh, no, uh, yeah, I, I should install NodeMon too. Every, everyone caught it. I accidentally deleted my ESLint file. You're very right. You are very right. <laughs> Uh, uh, hello, Mr. Demon Wolf. Welcome to the stream. I just did the same thing only two minutes ago. What, accidentally closed all of Chrome? Is that what we're talking about? I'm doing pretty good. We, we made 15,000 subscribers on YouTube. It's a, it's a good day. Uh, I am Seti Monokai all the way. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the theme that I've been using on the stream for like over a year now. Seti Monokai, but yeah. <laughs> uh, Gabriel says, new to the channel. Love the con content. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. The best theme is Cobalt too. Huh. Uh, was I looking for editor dot selection background? I think so. Let's try it. Though lime green seems like it's not the way to go. I wonder if I can add alpha values in my uh, in my theme here. I don't think so. I think they have to just be hex. That's the default value. Maybe that's not it. What was the other one? Selection highlight background. Oh. Yeah, it is selection highlight background. Cannot use RGBA. Oh. Oh, you can just add it as extra. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So I actually want to do, I do want to do lime green um, with like, um, I don't know, that much alpha. Wait, that's not right. Save it. Oh, wait, no, that was the wrong thing. I think it, I think it was selection background. I just had to uh, change it. Ah, okay, so uh, more more alpha. FF is like full, so that would be like that. So what if we did uh, AA? Not enough. What if we did um, five five? That's decent. I'm okay with that. That's what I want. There we go. <laughs> we can, I could probably figure out a better thing later. Uh, my or looks like da uh, dashes now. Yeah. So it it uh it has some italics built in. So when I do or, it actually makes them sideways, which okay, I'm okay with. It's not it's not a bad thing. Hello, Waleed. Thanks for the congrats. Yeah, we're trying a new theme today. 
<laughs> yeah, so uh, if you're new to the stream, um, there's a lot of chats coming in. So this thing lets me look at them one at a time. The right-hand side is real-time. The left-hand side is what I've read so far. So your thing is slanted. Thought it was your syntax error. No, <laughs> it's, it's slants slashes now. Hello, Annaboth. Welcome. Uh, I like where this theme is going. I appreciate it. Uh, I should check out Dank Mono. Um, is that a theme? I feel like I've heard of this before. Or is it a font? Oh, it's a font. I'm using uh, Anonymous Pro. The rather special coding font. I've, I've seen these before. So yeah, so they have built-in ligatures. Um, I'd, I feel like there, there are so many coding tutorials <laughs> online that are using this font. I, li I like to stick to Anonymous Pro. I like to stick. It's, it's a cool font, though. Okay, so we have our basic express app. Um, let's just get uh, a basic git route going. So we'll say uh, when a git request comes in on slash, we're going to respond with, for now, with some JSON. I think later on we'll actually add a, like a public serve. So we have a request, we have a response, um, and we're just going to res.json a message. Uh, we're gonna have web and then some nails. So it's like nails scraping. Is there a chalkboard? No, there's a taco. Let's just, I mean, uh, let's add the taco because tacos are good. Oh man, <laughs> there we go. So when we make a request on slash, we should, should you see this JSON message. Uh, one thing though is, um, where's my other node? Did I lose my other node too? Oh man, so many things are happening. Um, better, uh, we're gonna install nodemon so that way I don't have to keep restarting the server. Um, so let's do that. I uh, will do npm i install as a dev dependency node mon, and then we'll add a dev script in our package JSON, uh, and we'll say dev node mon source index.js. The content of the file is newer. Oh, it's because I. <laughs> Uh, it put Nodemon in my dev dependencies while I was trying to edit it. Oh man, so many things going wrong. <laughs> there's there's Nodemon, okay. All right, now I should be able to do npm run dev. All right, so it's listening, but now if I make changes to the server, it should automatically refresh, but we do have a basic git route, so we're making progress. We are making progress. That's true, the or does look like a comment. I don't know, I'm, I'm, I might fix it. Fire code is the only true font. That's the one that a lot of uh, coding tutorial people I see using. It's the one that has ligatures built in. Yeah, like that. Very interesting. Uh, Jesus is saying, last night I was catching up with Saturday stream. Yeah, Alka and I streamed for over six hours. <laughs> um, it, yeah, Anonymous Pro is free. Anonymous Pro font. I think uh, you can pay for it if you want, but uh, it's free. It doesn't have ligatures. I think I don't like, li I haven't really tried coding with ligatures before, but I think I don't like them. Thank you, David, thanks for the congrats. I have been a stream machine lately, yeah. And today I was feeling like very energized. I was like, I, w I want to stream, I want to build a thing. Yeah. Web scraping tacos. <laughs> it reminds me, I built an API that like, it actually, I didn't scrape the web, but I scraped this GitHub repo that had all these different taco recipes, but I scraped it so that I could put them in like a nice standardized format that could be turned into a JSON API. Um, I don't remember what the URL is anymore, but it's a, it's a taco API. It's cool. <laughs> web scrape tacos. What is that weird accent you just said? I don't know. I'm just, you know, <laughs> cool, but random. Somewhat Canadian, but maybe that's offensive. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, something about Catalina? Microsoft released another monospaced font for programmers. Oh, might be Catalina, cool. Uh, would you blacklist a user if the user has changed the password or account is deleted with JWT? How can we blacklist those tokens and manage them? I will answer that later because it's a little off topic, but it's a good question. So your question went over here. I will get back to it. 
Alka doesn't like ligatures. In programming, anyways. <laughs> yeah, Catalina is the new. <laughs> um, I've been streaming for an hour already? Oh, man. <laughs> Catalina is the new Mac OS. Uh, hello, Yari. Welcome to the stream. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> um, you know what's funny? I know you as you had on YouTube that I watched. Oh, so like you watched me on a video, but then you didn't, maybe you, maybe you didn't subscribe and now you're seeing me again. You're like, who is this guy? But now you know. Yeah, <laughs> I have a YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, and Alka is a mod, definitely. Cascadia. There we go. You were close, Brooks. Cascadia font. Interesting. It's kind of Kirby. Interesting, yeah. Uh, thank you, Geo, for the congrats. Yeah, uh, Alka was on the stream on Saturday, so you can check that out. <laughs> Joe, Joe's always, always shouting out, can we please hit the like button for this guru? You don't have to if you don't want to, but it is much appreciated. Um, what website will we, we be scraping? I will take any suggestions. So if you all want to, um, you, I, YouTube, I don't think you can post links, but... Um, just say the name of the website and I can search for it. I think on on Twitch you can share a link. So go ahead and start doing that. If you uh, share some links for sites that you would like me to extract info and create like a nice little um, embeddable thing. Could you scrape my website? I could try if you have the right meta tags. <laughs> um, I may be, not be able to risk five, put five hours. I'm not going to stream. So I'm going to stream for maybe an hour and a half more and then I'm done. I, I gotta police myself. I can't be streaming for like five hours anymore. <laughs> so uh, an hour and a half, that's that's max. And then we'll be done with this thing. One hour in and we have a get route. Yeah, I mean, we spent the first 30 minutes saying hello to everyone. Um, it, it's gonna be easy. We're gonna, we're, it's, gonna it's gonna be nice. Uh, Mr. Demon Wolf says, you're a good content creator. Uh, keep making videos. I appreciate that. Scrape the Cheerio website. That would be super meta. Um, if you share your link, Mr. Demon Wolf, I'll, I'll give it a try. <laughs> uh, you mostly would be able to on the blog as it's WordPress. Yeah, and usually WordPress automatically has like meta tags and stuff like that, so that would work. Uh, interesting is what my grandma says when she hates something but doesn't want to make you feel bad. <laughs> You've been saying that about some of these fonts. <laughs> I don't know. I have I have my preferences. <laughs> Uh, the NASA website? Sure, yeah. NASA.gov. Yeah, let's uh, let's just make a, a nice little uh, link uh, set of things we will scrape. Sites to scrape. There's one. Uh, I, I, you know what? I'll try. I'll try to use port 15,000, but I believe it's outside of the ac acceptable range for range for ports uh, on a Unix system. I think it's I think it's too big. Oh my, my, no! Maybe it's not. Maybe not. Yeah, it works. Thank you. What is the maximum value? Cool. Appreciate that. <laughs> We're on port 15,000 now. Hello, broad dog. But welcome to the stream. Yeah, let's scrape the Cheerio.js website. If they have one, we might just have to scrape npm. I don't know if they have a documentation website. Oh, here we go. Cheerio.js.org. Sweet. MrDemonWolf.me. Sweet. So if we look at the source of the page, um, yeah, it's got meta tags. It's Done. We can do this. We can definitely do that. Hour and a half. Who are you? <laughs> uh, the Apex Gamer website for a Division 2 character stats. That would be interesting. Uh, Division 2? Is that a game? I, I'm not plugged into the game scene. Uh, Apex Division... Oh, Apex Legends. Division 2. Is that like a season? We're getting some weird results here on DuckDuckGo. Apex Legends Division 2. We should probably scrape the Fortnite website and put that in the video title because of this. <laughs> um, the internet's all, uh, all the rage about that. 
Here we go. Apex Legends Ranked League Series 2. So ultimately, what I, 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 I didn't really explain this, but what I'm going to do is given a website URL, we're going to extract the title of the page. We're going to try to extract a description of the page. We'll extract any um, major or common image from the page and um, any other tags or information about that web page. And, and usually those things are available as uh, meta tags. Yeah, so like meta OG. So this has a title, it has a description, it has a URL. Um, it has an image, which we can use as well. Yeah, see, super cool. So let's uh, let's definitely do this website. Um, and so that's that's what we're building. It's just like a basic grab all the information for the web page scraper. Magic the Gathering player. So um, let's see. So it has a title. It has content. Um, it has some keywords. Yeah, it's pretty basic, but we could still scrape it. Let's do it. Uh, Wally Ox is saying, random question, does the recent Supreme Court case about how websites are required to abide by the ADA change anything at your work? This is a great question. I haven't really thought about it, but it probably does. Um, <laughs> scrap Fortnite. Uh, so if you're building websites that have users, which you probably are because that's websites are for, <laughs> then typically they will need to be uh, accessibility enabled. So we haven't talked about it at work, but yeah, that's definitely a thing that we're I mean, so my company builds software for other companies that need software, and I'm sure other companies don't want to be sued. So when we're building a website for them, we're basically going to have to say, hey, this site should be accessible. We're going to need to charge a little bit more money so that we can make, spend the time making sure that the website is accessible so that you don't get sued by um, someone that has a disability. The SpaceX API. Oh, Annabeth is saying the maximum port is 65,535. That is good to know. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Mongo runs on 27.017. Yeah, the, the scraper won the poll. The SpaceX. Let's, yeah, let's just look at the SpaceX website. SpaceX.com. Yeah. The port number is an unsigned 16-bit integer. So 65, 535. Very cool. <laughs> Uh, nice, Mr. Demon Wolf got some uh, pull requests approved for Hacktoberfest. You can get a t-shirt. That's great. Since you're scraping, I got some paint spilled on my window. I'll scrape the paint off. <laughs> uh, is Alka giving you powers that you will code super fast today? Yes. I think we're, <laughs> we're about to get started coding. That's awesome. Congrats, Mr. Demon Wolf. Yeah, I mean, I heard, like I saw that they only had uh, 50,000 total shirts to give out. I don't know how many people participate, but I think you, you kind of got to get in early to make sure you get a t-shirt. Uh, can you save the data to be in MongoDB like a full stack app? Um, let's consider this a stretch goal. So that, that would essentially be caching the results. Um, the way that this is initially going to work is um, it's just going to do the initial scrape and then uh, forget about it. And the next time you ask for it, it can scrape it again. We could do some basic in-memory caching um, but yeah, that could be a stretch. So the theme I'm using is called, uh, one dark raincoat, this one. Um, there's that. And you know what? I'm going to put the Twitch chat up here cause I'm about to start coding. And sometimes people are like, is this even live? It's live. I just, you know, I got to stop responding to all the chats at some point and get some code written. <laughs> uh, that goes right about there. Cool. Uh, thanks for the follow, uh, Kurvik. Welcome. And uh, thanks for the follow, Juancho Galarza. Welcome to the stream. Uh, I didn't do anything for Oct Oktoberfest. I opened a lot of pull requests and closed a lot of pull requests, but uh, graphic t-shirts really aren't my thing, so... Uh, thanks for the YouTube sub. <laughs> yeah, I that like that's that's the next step. But the the issue with uh, adding the ability for me to send a message from this UI is then I'm actually storing credentials potentially in the browser. So at that point, I would probably disable the ability for people to embed HTML. 
uh, because at that point, if I were to be vulnerable to a cross-site scripting attack, someone could write a script that steals my cookies. Right now, this page is dumb. It just calls the APIs. There are no credentials in the browser, so it's safe. But eventually, I want to do that, but I got I to gotta make it a lot more secure for that. Um, Hacktoberfest last year got 46,000 users completion. Okay. Awesome. I see this exp app expanding to a new uh, search engine. Uh, what did we try to do here? Yeah, so that, that renders if you send an H1. <laughs> Rylex is asking, why do you wear that silly hat? Because I need a haircut. And so uh, this prevents you from seeing my messy hair for now. All right, let's do it. Um, I'm going to take a sip of water. That wasn't water, that was tea. I don't know why I said water, but let's write some code. So first, in our index.js, uh, we need a scrape method. I'm gonna go ahead and just put this in a separate file. Let's call it uh, scraper.js. And um, in this file, we're gonna need Axios. So Axios is a tool that lets us make HTTP requests. And for this type of scraping, we are not running any of the code on the web page. We're essentially just making a request to the web page grabbing all of the HTML, and then in the HTML that comes back, we're going to extract out some information to create a nice little embeddable information about that thing. Uh, so we've got Axios, uh, and we'll also bring in Cheerio. So Cheerio is a client-side library, sorry, a server-side library for um, extracting elements from HTML. It's essentially jQuery on the server side. So that's what we're going to use to reach in and grab the title and the description and the image and different things like that. Uh, so we have a function called scraper. Um, this is going to take in a URL, and then it will do the thing. <laughs> uh, and we're just going to export this function from the file. Module.exports equals scraper. And now we need to do the thing. So the first thing we need to do is request the HTML from that web page. So we're going to make this an async function. Um, and then we'll say response equals await axios.get, and we'll pass in the URL. Now, one thing we could do if we wanted to be more efficient about, about this, is we could actually uh, tell the, in the request, say we only want the head of the document. And actually, let's, let's do that. Um, I think, does Axios have a head method? I don't have autocomplete for Axios. Um, Alka, what do I do if I want type completion for Axios? <laughs> um, Maybe it does though. I can I can look up the docs, but axios.head. So maybe instead ooh, did did it just maybe this will work. So essentially instead of a get request or a post request, we're doing a head request, which will only request the head of the document. And the head is usually what has the the meta tags where we can extract out uh, all of that information. Let's let's see if this works. Uh, for now we're just going to log uh, response dot body. Cool. And so uh, now in my actual API, I'll bring in that file that is the scraper. So let's say const scraper equals require uh, dot slash scraper dot JS. And now we need a route for scraping. So um, I'm just going to make, I guess we, we could we could actually do this on the, um, you know what, I'll make it a separate route because that way we could call it separately from the home page. So I'll say app dot get slash scrape. We'll have our request in our response. And then inside of here, we're just going to grab the URL from the query string. So we'll say URL equals a rec.query. And then we'll say um, const result equals await scraper with that URL. And then we're just going to res.json an object with the result property just to see what we get. And so this needs to be an async function so that we can that way we can await that. So we go back to the browser and we do a, um, uh, we go to localhost 15,000. That's our git route. But if we say slash scrape and we pass in a URL, so let's pass in the uh, NASA website. Let's see if this works. Doesn't. <laughs> uh, let's look in the logs. Here, I'm going to look up uh, Axios. 
documentation to see if it has a head method, because it might not. No, it does. Axios.head, and you pass in the config. Uh, you know what? Uh, Response.body might not actually be a thing. So let's just pass in the entire response, and that's going to have a bunch of properties on it. Let's see. Try again. Nope. Um, so we are logging it. Oh, because it's not the body, because we requested the head, of course. <laughs> Um, so we need another property. I guess it's like uh, head. Let's look at their documentation for head. Dot head. No head? Oh, I mean, that's possible. I didn't even think about that. But yeah, let's go to nasa.gov. If you look at it. Oh, no, it definitely has a head. There it is. <laughs> Uh, npmi at type slash axios. I'm going to do that. So we, we get some uh, autocomplete in, uh, in our editor. <sighs> this is a stub types definition for axios. Axio pro provides its own type definition, so you don't need types axios installed. Weird, because apparently I did. Axios dot, well, there it is. Well, no, that's just auto-suggesting it. Okay, so this isn't working. We're just gonna do a, um, a git request because then we can look at the result there. Um, oh, and I'm not even returning the response. I think that's why too. So let's return the response from this function. We'll also log it so we can at least see it in the console. Um, well, let's try again. Go back to the browser. We make the request. It's trying. But we get an error. <laughs> Uh, converting circular structure to JSON. I, I expected that. So response has a lot of uh, cir circular properties. So let's just try uh, response.data. See, see what we get. Try again. There we go. <laughs> so response.data has all of the HTML from uh, requesting um, the NASA website. And we can see that the head is in there. So we could possibly get the head. But right now, I'm just going to do uh, a super basic grab into this HTML, grab the title, we'll return that, and um, then I'll catch up on the chat because the head would be the most ideal because that way we're not requesting this entire web page. We're only requesting the head because that has all the information that we need. Uh, but if we go to nasa.gov and we look at the source of the web page, um, if we reach into the head, we can grab the meta um, property OG site name and that's going to give us NASA. Um, let's see if there is a title, Twitter title, um, OG title. Actually, let's grab OG title, and we're going to include that. So this is the thing that we need to select. So inside of Cheerio, we need a um, a selector that's going to grab that from, from the document. So first thing we do is we create our dollar sign, and that's going to be equal to Cheerio.load. We're going to pass in response.data. Um, actually, I'm going to destructure it so we can just grab the data right here. Um, and then now that we have loaded that HTML into Cheerio, we can do some selecting. So I'm going to say title is going to be, um, we need to select the meta tag where the property attribute is equal to OG title. And from that, we need to grab the attribute content. And that should give us National Aeronautics and Space Administration. So from here, we're going to return an object that has the title inside of it. Um, and then in our express route, we're actually just going to immediately respond with the result. So that way, we don't have any nested data. And that should, if we did it right, give us back the title. So now we pass in the website, we grab that HTML, we reach in, we grab the title, and we're, we've, we've done some super basic scraping. Um, but like I said, the head would actually be ideal. So let's catch up. Let's see what Majestic has sent us. An iframe. I've disabled iframes. <laughs> uh, you can buy one of these hats. Uh, I'll, I'll get a link for you later. Um, if you're right. It is a hat. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's just a hat. <laughs> I block script tags.
Uh, gotta show off your flowing mane. I guess I could. I don't think I've ever done that on stream. Yeah, you don't want to see it, though. My, my hair is, like, greasy right now. <laughs> uh, jQuery server side? No, that sounds awesome. Yeah, so it's a... Uh, um, it's essentially, it has a very similar API to jQuery. So it allows us to load some HTML in and then uh, do some jQuery-like things. Uh, why would I use star import in Node.js instead of require? You would really only use that if you have modules enabled or if you're, um, if you're using something like Babel node. Uh, but essentially, that, that's a, a common JS way of grabbing all of the things that are exported from that particular module and putting it into a single variable. Uh, npm require just for editors sake. Yep. Saved it. <laughs> We're trying some handlebars. That won't work. <laughs> you gotta be nice on this stream. Be nice to each other. Yeah, no head. <laughs> It'll add autocomplete to VS Code. A head HTTP is only HTTP headers if that's what you're trying to do. Yeah, so that's what I was trying to do. Um, I, I really need to see some documentation for that, though, um, because it's not going to be... Maybe it's .data? Let's just try that. If we say .head and if we just log data, does that do it? Because before I was trying like dot body. Let's let's see. No, and data is just nothing. So we we need we need to look at the documentation and figure out how does this head method work. Um, doc you doc docs where are the docs examples all. Well, that's not right. You know what? I probably could just use fetch because that has a head method. I mean, I can specify the method. I don't know. Try response.head. Let's do it. We broke it. Um, cannot read property parent of undefined. <laughs> so um, it uh, head is un dot head is undefined. Uh, we need to use element dot text or dot HTML. Um, I shouldn't have to here because we actually load the document in with uh, jQuery dot or with Cheerio dot load. Yeah, we're using Node.js. <laughs> uh, thanks for the follow, Jitter Ted. I appreciate it. Testing. Uh, Google doesn't let you put um, less than or greater than in branded account names. Interesting. Try re reloading VS Code to get autocomplete working. I think that's a valid idea. Um, okay, so if I say Axios dot default dot head. So this responds with an Axios response of any, which is the same if I do like axios.get. This is an Axios response of any. So, I mean, maybe we need to look at the Axios response type. Yeah, I mean, we did it. <laughs> we want to do it in a more efficient way, but we did it. <laughs> Click, cut the head clean off. Yeah, I mean, the idea with the with the head request is that Instead of requesting the entire page, it would literally just request up to... Oh, I mean, they have a, they have a pretty big head. Their head is big. <laughs> Where does the head end? Oh, it's somewhere in here. Header oh, there it is. So instead of requesting the whole thing, we would essentially only request that part right there, which, which would be better, but we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, we could do... Yeah, we could return the promise. Yeah, so we got some autocomplete. It's just not, it's just not helping. 
Uh, what's your What's the name of the VS Code extension that runs the code in the file? Yeah, so I'm not using that right now, but it's called uh, Quaka JS. You can check it out there. <laughs> uh, thanks for the host, Mr. Demon Wolf. Quelcum uh, parlez français? I, I don't speak French, but thanks for stopping by. <laughs> head wouldn't give you any HTML though, so it's useless. Really? I thought it got like the contents of the head, doesn't it? Oh, it only requests HTTP headers. Psh, psh. <laughs> okay, so we, we don't want to use that at all then. Uh, thanks, thanks for clarifying that. So really, really, we do just want to do a get request. Makes sense. Okay, we went down that path. Um, <laughs> it. Uh, Cool, so request the entire page, then we can extract the things that we need. Cool, so we have uh, the title. The, th the thing about uh, certain web pages is they may not have this OG title meta property, so we should have some logic that tries a couple of different ways to get the title. Um, so for example, let's try scraping, oh, I mean, why not? Let's try scraping Quaka.js. So um, if I start the app back up, we got the title, great, but what happens if I pass uh, quackajs.com. Nothing. Because if we look at the source of quackajs, it doesn't have an OG title. Um, but it does have an actual title tag. So I think what we'll do is we'll look for the OG. OG? <laughs> and if we can't find it, we'll actually just reach in and get the actual title of the page. So let's do that. Um, so we will say, uh, let title equal that. And then if there is no title, we're going to say, um, title equals, we want to grab the title element and we want to grab its text content. So now that we've done that, if we request a site that doesn't have an OG title, we do get back the title. So that's very good. Um, and this should pretty much work with any website because pretty much any website has a title tag. Um, let's try Mr. Demon Wolf. Mr. Demon Wolf, web developer, web designer, content creator. <laughs> Sweet, so we got the title. Uh, let's look at some other meta tags. I think the other thing we would want to grab is the description. Um, and that's usually OG description. Where are we at? We are here. Um, so it's, it's very similar to this, except that it's OG description instead. So because of that, I'm actually going to put this um, in uh, a function. So. We're gonna say, uh, we have a function ca called like get OG content. Should I say like OG content? I like that, OG content. Um, and we're going to pass in um, the selector. And we're going to return uh, this. So we need to pass in the thing itself and the selector that we're looking for. So right here is where we wanna put the selector. Um, and we'll turn this into a, uh, a template string. that. So now I can say um, get OG content with dollar sign and OG title. Cool. Let's make sure it still works for the NASA website. Still works. Cool. But now that we have that nice little helper function, uh, we can now just say um, the description equals get OG content of uh, with dollar sign and OG description. And then we'll include the description here. Uh, I'm using a let because maybe we find a website that doesn't have an OG description, so we'll have to figure out what's the alternative for that. So now if we request it, we get the description. Very cool. Uh, if we pass in uh, Quaka.js, it doesn't have an OG description. Let's look at its source. Um, so it has a title. Um, oh, I see. So the the meta is a meta name description. So I think we'll, we'll default to the OG things. Um, so OG stands, I didn't even talk about that. OG stands for open graph. And uh, this is like a standard thing that a lot of websites do. And like when you paste a link on Facebook, it's looking for the OG tags because the OG tags are kind of like the default way to set some content for a web page. Uh, but we'll just say um, if there was no OG tag, 
then we'll say uh, description equals um, and if we're looking at the source of this website this is a meta tag with the name description I want to write a function for it because we're gonna we're gonna reuse something like this actually I'll do it without a function for now so we want to grab the uh, meta tag where the name attribute is description and we want to grab its content attribute cool so now if we pass in quaka we should get back a description and we do very good we're making progress and we're only an hour and a half in see I told you I told you <laughs> uh, rabbitworks says just installed Python uh oh yeah so we're just gonna use we're just gonna use the get method and that makes a lot of sense um, uh, of course they have a big head. They are NASA. Yes, of course. We? Oui? Yeah, I don't speak French. Sorry. <laughs> um, thank you for following, uh, J-Man Feld. I appreciate it. Um, what an OG title. Yeah. And thanks for the follow, uh, Rylex. Yeah, so, uh, there was a comment that, uh, I guess we don't care about if, we don't care if there is, like, a robot text no follow or anything like that. Um, we could look at that. But the thing is, most websites that have these meta tags, um, they're meant for things like this to extract information about them. Um, but let's just take a look at, like, this website, Quaka, and see if it has a, a robots.txt. Not found. So we, we could first request the robots.txt and uh, see um, if it has anything in it. And if it does, um, what we should do. So this has like disallow. And typically that's what the robots.txt is going to say. It's going to say you shouldn't look at these nested folders. Um, only these specific user agents are allowed, that kind of thing. But we're doing very very basic uh, scraping we are just extracting the metadata about the web page itself we're not um scraping for data we're not trying to grab any of any special stuff we're just really getting the the metadata about the web page hello sultan hello cody <laughs> uh what is this iga.india.gov the indi oh indiana general assembly let's let's see if uh it has some og tags no, so it has a title, but it doesn't have a description. So let's see what its content looks like. Um, it has a copyright. It has an author. Um, yeah, they don't have a description. I mean, this is the case where we could potentially um, look at the main content of the web page and see, like, does it have... Uh, an element on the page that's like the description of the website. We could also just grab the, the literal text of the page. <laughs> so we could do something like this. Um, so if not description, description equals that. If that didn't find the description, we could do this. We could say description equals, um, let's grab the body and just in the text we could also like grab the first paragraph tag on the page and see what we get um, but let's see what this gives us for indiana.gov yeah we get this this big old thing <laughs> um we could um we could trim it we could yeah so let's do like trim and we'll do a substring um to only grab like the first 100 characters um and we'll put dot 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 on the end Skip to main content, Indiana General Assembly, 2019 session, primary. <laughs> so that's like grabbing the navs and stuff like that. So the thing is, uh, let's see what skip to main content. Um, this is an element with ID skip to main. Yeah. I don't, know if you, I don't know. Does anyone else have some suggestions for what we should do if they don't have a description tag? What do we have here? We have an anchor tag. Inside of it, a P tag. Inside of that, an anchor tag with a link to a paste bin. <laughs> um, it, is, it does create a link. How can I escape this? I'm not going to click it. Good job. Hello, Kim. Welcome to the stream. Majestic Guy says, I give up. You did your best, and I, and I appreciate it. 
Uh, Rylex is asking, can you do like description equals description um, or the other one? Um, uh, maybe. So like in the um, the actual um, um, the selector here. That that would technically work with OG description because we do want the content attribute. Um, and really it's an or. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah we could do that. Why not? Um, I can't reuse my get OG content thing anymore though, but um, I could do something like this. Um, we could pass this in. and then put a comma. So uh, this is a CS, CSS selector that will select either of those. Um, uh, the issue here though is it gets a little bit trickier because if I say content and the page has both of those, so let's try on the NASA website because if the page has both of those elements, it's it probably will grab the, um, okay, grab the first one. Um, let's see if it has, it has OG description and it does have name description. So that worked. Cool. I like it. Um, like I said, the only thing about that is we can't reuse this nice get OG content function, but that's OK. Um, I'm not going to fix that just yet, because there could be some suggestions for what do we do if they don't have a description. Uh, wasn't it recent, uh, recently found you can scrape any website you like? In terms of um, like a, a court ruling? I think so. So uh, yeah, I don't know the specifics of it, but there was like an actual court ruling that um, said, maybe even depending on the terms of the website, but you are allowed to just get the content of a website. Pretty sure. We'll say that. Yeah, there was some case. I'll say that. Uh, Kevin is saying, are you saying legally you can or physically you can? Uh, sure, you can physically do it, but accessing a server without permission is criminal, even if you don't have to circumvent security. Yes, but this is a public website that responds to HTTP requests on either port 443 or port 80. So it is a publicly accessible website. We are not doing anything to circumvent accessing that website. If this server responds to a GET request, we're just using the response and using that data. But you're right. Like if you're if you're doing something to get around accessing something that you don't have access to, that is uh, something that would fall under the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. Uh, find the first paragraph uh, inth of type or something like that. I like that idea. Uh, Kim is saying, love seeing that skip to main content for people using screen readers. That's true. And that's what's making this a little bit harder to scrape is they have all of this like ARIA and um, things that a screen reader could use to allow some someone to navigate the website in a more accessible way. Uh, select text from the first tag if there is no description. So just find the first tag on the page and get the text. We can do that. Yeah. If there is no value, you can use or and set unknown. Um, I don't think I want to say unknown. I think I'll just leave the property off altogether. Um, or actually, I mean, I'll leave it as a an empty string. Yeah, I think I'll do this. Because if it doesn't have a title, yeah, and if it doesn't have one of those, uh, then we actually are grabbing the we are grabbing the content, so we're good there. Last test. All right, what do you got? An anchor tag with an href with an image inside of it. Um, maybe try again because you didn't close the anchor tag or the form. Yeah, maybe try with closing tags. I don't know. Uh, set a default description if no description is available. So we could say, um, I don't know. This is a website. <laughs> uh, grab keywords if no description. That's a good point. I do. I do want to grab the keyword. The the keywords though. So if we look at the source of the site, typically they have like a meta tag, uh, meta name keywords, and that will give you all of the keywords. So. Let's definitely grab that. Um, let's do that right here. So we'll say keywords equals hey document. 
grab the meta item with the name attribute of keywords. Uh, the thing here is this actually could be um, OG description. You know what? Let's let's look at something that would have OG like this. Look at keywords. NASA doesn't have keywords. OG identifier. If you look at the open graph spec, what are the possible properties? The four required properties on every page are OG title, OG type, OG image, and OG URL. So we definitely want to grab those. And then OG description and different things like that are optional. Okay, so let's definitely, while we're thinking about it, we're gonna grab the type, image, and URL, if they exist. Uh, first, we'll grab the keywords. Um, and we wanna grab, I think, the content attribute. So if we look back at the indiana.gov website, um, keywords, content, cool. And it'll equal that or um, nothing. <laughs> and so we'll pass the keywords in. Um, we also want to grab those things that I just talked about. So, We want OG type. Oh no, const. Const, not const. Um, so we'll say uh, get OG content with um, OG type. And so we'll pass in the type. And then we also want the image if it exists. And that's gonna be uh, get OG content with OG of image. And then we also want the URL, and that's going to be get OG content of OG URL. And then we can specify all of those, so uh, type, image, and URL. Um, let's call this OG URL because we actually are just passing in the URL itself. <laughs> so um, we can say URL is OG URL, or if that wasn't found, use the URL that was passed in. All right, what do we got? Broken. Let's see what broke. Uh, identifier URL has already been declared. Well, I fixed that. Um, type error. Dollar sign is not a function. Oh, I forgot to pass in the dollar sign to all of these. Dollar sign. Dollar sign. Dollar sign. Try again. There we go. So from the NASA website, we have the title, the type, the image, the URL, the description. No keywords. Cool. Uh, what happens if we try indiana.gov? Yeah, we got keywords, URL, image type. Uh, what happens if we try Quokka.js? It's pretty good. It's pretty good if you ask me. <laughs> um, I think we want to pass in, actually in here we'll say uh, or empty string. So we'll at least include those properties, but they'll just be uh, empty. Because um, that way, uh, on the front end, if we're trying to create like a nice little card with this embedded information, we don't want to accidentally say like, have like undefined or anything in there. Uh, that's how it's supposed to be. It's called DOM clobbering. Oh, so the browser tries to make up for it and like creates the um, the closing tags. I see. Uh, I wrote the first P tag, but your chat manager converted it to HTML. Yeah. Um, I think it less it mentions anything in the site's terms of service. Uh, I know a site like uh, Comixology says you can't create any script that makes more Git requests than a human would. I've seen that a lot in terms of services. Um, basically, you don't want to clobber their server with requests as long as you're being very uh, pragmatic about it and only making like one request every few seconds, you should be good. Uh, but once you start trying to make something bigger that's scraping a lot more data and making more requests, uh, that's when you, you might be in trouble. Description not provided. But the thing I'm thinking about is like if we generate a card with this, I don't want to say description not provided. I just don't want to show a description if it doesn't exist. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know. Uh, Daniela is saying, so like you couldn't constantly refresh to see if there are new comic issues posted. You'd have to store the day's releases and then do queries from that. Makes sense. 
no keywords. Is that legal? It's all about uh, search engine optimization. And that's what a lot of these tags are for. Is So when a, a search engine is going across these websites, it uses things like the, the keyword and the description in the head um, as a, an instant way of getting information about that web page. So um, yeah, Quokka doesn't care about search engine optimization. I mean, I guess which is fine. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, if the function is get OG content, should you just uh, pass type image? Yes, I was thinking of that when I typed OG every time. So let's do that. So now we can just say type image URL title, and then we'll automatically add that in. Say so it saves us saves us some time. So it should still work, but uh, now code's a little bit cleaner and less repetitive. Cool. <laughs> so many dollar signs is this PHP. If you've ever worked with jQuery, this is exactly what it looks like. Dollar signs everywhere. Uh, Majestic Guy is saying, I created a pretty hefty a uh, AliExpress scraper. Then they implemented some crazy blocker that couldn't get yeah, even get around with proxies. Yeah, that's a thing for sure. Chario is jQuery in mid-age crisis. Because <laughs> it works on the back end? I don't know. Appreciate the explanation. What did I explain? Oh, no keywords. Is that legal? Yeah. So, I mean, it's, I, th I think that's what you were saying. Um, yeah, I think it's technically if like they want better search engine optimization or better, they want to show up higher in the search results. Um, cool. Let's, let's try some of these other websites that we have links to. So Mr. Demon Wolf. Yeah, so Mr. Demon Wolf has everything except for image and keywords, which is cool. Uh, let's try this Apex Legends site uh, that uh, Willy Lump Lump suggested. Let's see what we get. Cool, Apex Legends Ranked League Series 2. The type is article. We have a nice little image there. Um, we have the URL. We have the descriptions. Cool, it's pretty good. Uh, let's try, I don't remember what this website was. Oh, it was uh, something with Magic the Gathering, but let's try it. Cool, it's missing type and image. SpaceX. There we go. Has all the properties. I think, I think we've done good so far. So <laughs> I think maybe what, what we should also look at is just see what other things are available like in OG. So a lot of times um, sites will have these Twitter tags and this is what Twitter uses whenever it embeds a, a link. So like if you look at the uh, Coding Garden Twitter, um, I always share a link to Twitch or a link to YouTube. And so it uses the, typically, if they exist, the Twitter attributes to decide what image should be displayed when you share a URL or something like that. Um, so we could potentially reach in and grab those if we need to. Let's see. So we have description. Interesting. The Twitter description is different from the regular description. Pioneering the future in space exploration, scientific discovery, and aeronautics research. Um, we have URL, image. Oh, here's another thing. The, um... This LDJSON schema, which gives us uh, a bit more information about the website itself. I guess technically we could reach in and grab this too. I don't know if we want to. I think what we might, maybe. Um, let's, let's just search the web for uh, application LDJSON, but I, I believe this is like a specification. Let's see. Uh, JSON-LD is a method of encoding linked data using JSON. Uh, it was a global to require as little effort as possible from developers to transform their existing JSON to JSON-LD. Yeah, so it kind of describes the web page and I guess where it can link to or where it will go to. Yeah, JSON for linking data. Why not? Let's just grab it. So let's grab the script with type um, application LD JSON. And we'll just add it as a property if it exists. Um, LD JSON. So we'll say, hey, Cheerio, uh, give me the script that has uh, that type attribute. 
and let's get the um, inner HTML of it. So like all of the contents of it. Or nothing. And so we'll include that there. Let's see what we get. So nothing for SpaceX, but what about for NASA? Cool. I mean, technically we could JSON parse it and then pass and then return it as an actual JSON object. Um, JSON parsing random things could be a bad though. <laughs> um, so let's say, um, json.parse ldjson. Yeah, now it comes back as an actual actual JSON object and you could reach in and, and grab the stuff. Um, but if we try SpaceX, try again, it's gonna break because it's trying to parse JSON of an empty string. Um, so we'll, let's just do like a little ternary. If it exists, do that, otherwise, empty object. Why are you complaining? LDJSON is not in camel case. Um, I don't want it to be. I'm gonna change that in my linter. So the rule here is camel case. So in my linter file, under rules, I'm gonna say uh, camel case, turn that rule off. There we go. All right, try again. There we go, so LDJSON is empty. Um, I mean, I guess technically I could set it to null instead of an empty object. Like that. Uh, and that way, um, so if a site doesn't have an LDJSON, we don't show it. If it does, we do show it. Let's see. Hello, the coding cat. Uh, Josh is saying, you should have a query for which type it looks for. OG versus Twitter. OG is the default. Um, yeah, I guess I could. So. Basically, our, our git og function um, could say something like, try to select this. If it doesn't exist, do title colon. And we could look at the, the specification for, um, I don't know, like Twitter meta tags. how to create a Twitter card. And uh, um, basically this is how you can create uh, interesting embeds on Twitter when someone shares a link to your website. If you have those Twitter uh, meta properties on your, on your website, Twitter will use those when it's creating the embed. So that's good. Uh, generic ones, the type of card to be created, summary, photo, or video. The URL that should be used for the card. This will likely be the same page. Uh, the title that should be displayed on the card, a description, an image. Yeah, so let's do this in our, instead of calling this git og content, uh, we're gonna use f2 to rename. <laughs> let's just call this uh, git content. And then automatically in there, we can try both, similar to what we were doing down here. Um, so we can try that or the Twitter selector. It will default to OG, but if it doesn't exist, we'll see if they have a Twitter one. And so now, if a site has Twitter but not the other, um, I don't know if I have an example of that. Because NASA has everything. Uh, let's try the LDJSON website. <laughs> yeah, so they didn't have like anything. Um, let's try the uh, Open Graph website. Okay. Let's try this Axios GitHub page. It's pretty good. <laughs> cool. Uh, today we are scraping a website to get basic information like the title, the description, the tags, the image, so that we can create a nice little embeddable um, thing of all the website information. Uh, Army says, I honestly can't believe your timing. I was working on a web scraper. Guess I'm going to watch this first. Uh, I have a lot of older videos on web scraping too. Today we're, we're trying to be very, um, we're, we're not extracting any interesting data, though 
all all of these things that we're doing could absolutely be used to get the actual data in a table or something like that. Uh, what we're doing is the same thing that uh, Twitter does when it shows information about a link. That's about it. Thanks, Willie Lump Lump. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have a new theme. I've written a service in PHP to generate Twitch embed cards. Ooh. Um, does Twitch have their own uh, API for it? Twitch card. Card kingdom. Twitch card, Twitch card embed. Embedding Twitch. Okay, I, I, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not finding it. Uh, thanks for the follow, uh, DES. Welcome to the stream. Uh, instead of the ternary on the LDJSON, use the fallback in the variable to fall back to that. Yeah, that's true. So um, right here, because I'm saying or empty string, I could technically do that. Um, so actually, I want it to be null. Can you JSON parse null? I feel like that would have a serious error. Let's see. We're going to go into node. JSON.parse. Oh, I think if you parse the string null. Yeah, we get back null. Cool. Um, because, yeah, I did want it. I want it to be null instead of an empty object. So that way... Um, if someone is using this to create a card or something like that, uh, it will explicitly not have a value versus being an empty object. It's working. <laughs> All right, what do you have for me? May I am so me? Just a bunch of p tags. Appreciate it. <laughs> what about this one? Just a bunch of p tags. I also appreciate that. <laughs> uh, switch dev embeds. That's that's a good search term. Embedding Twitch, embedding chat, embedding video and clips. Hmm, cool. But they do have embeds, I see. Uh, the chat app looks different. Yeah, I've been adding new features and entering things like that. We actually have some questions we should get to in a second. Uh, Twitch is the, is the website that you're on right now. <laughs> Uh, can you do a project with Vue or Swell? You know what? I think I'll build... So I need to build a front end for this. Right now, it's just a JSON API. But kind of what I want to do is you have we have a nice little web page with an input box. You put the URL in, and then below that, it creates an embed, and then it shows you the HTML that you can copy and paste somewhere to get that embed. Let's break the overlay. <laughs> yeah, marquees work. That's pretty sweet, right? Marquee. Svelte, we should use Svelte. Eh, we might use Svelte. I think we'll vote on it when we get to the front end. Um, all right, I'm only going to be streaming for like 30 more minutes, so we kind of we kind of need to get coding. Um, are, is there anything else? <laughs> is there anything else we should be extracting from the website? You know what? Let's try um, let's try Twitch. Like, what do we get back when we embed a uh, or if we ask for Twitch? Title: Twitch. Type is a website. Um, we just get back the Twitch logo and the URL, and it's a, it's a generic description. Interesting. I guess that's okay. Interesting. Cool. Can anyone think of any other things that we might want to get from a website? And also, were there, did I try all of the possible websites? Does anyone have a website that I should try that I haven't tried yet? I guess technically, technically, here's one something I thought of. So if they don't have an image, we could try to grab the favicon or one of these icon images. Um, so like on the Quokka site, they didn't have like OG image. Yeah, they didn't. But do they have an icon? It is an ICO file. It's teeny, teeny tiny. <laughs> Can you put an ICO in an image? Yeah. 
yeah, you can. Look at that. <laughs> Let's do that. So um, if the website doesn't have an image, uh, we're just going to um, see if there is like a shortcut icon item. Yeah, because like on this one, we could grab the PNG. So this is what we want. And then we want to grab the href. Okay, so if image was not defined, um, let's do that here. If there was no image, um, we need to parse for that. Um, so we need to reach into the document, grab a link where the rel is a shortcut icon and we want to grab the href attribute um, so that should work we'll make this a let so now if we request quaka um, we get it back but we should probably check uh, does that href begin with HTTP? Because if it doesn't, then uh, we want to put the URL in front of it. Um, so let's do that. So if image and image dot start does not start with HTTP, then we're going to say image equals uh, we want to take the URL that we passed in. Um, this gets tricky because you technically could have passed in the URL to like a nested web page. Um, does Node have a URL parser? URL, yeah. So you can pass in a URL and then just ask for we could create a thing that just has the protocol and the host name in it. So let's do that. Um, yeah, and it's just URL. So we can require that in. And right here, we'll say uh, const, um, I don't know, page URL. Oh, now we have URL and URL. <laughs> Let's call this page URL. We'll call this parse URL is going to be URL with the page URL. I think that's how it works. So um, we bring in URL and then we say URL.parse. So that's going to give us the parsed URL. Um, and then that's an object with a bunch of properties. So we should be able to um, say like dot, we'll, we'll construct a, an image URL. So now image is going to be a template string with a parsed URL. And actually, uh, let's just destructure this. So we want to grab the protocol and the host name. And I think that should be it. So we can say uh, protocol. Uh, we might need to add colon slash slash, and then we'll add the host name slash, and that's where we add the existing uh, image URL. Like that. All right, let's see what happens. So when we request the info about Quaka, what we're hoping happens is we now have the URL in front of the image. It borked. Uh, invalid arg type URL must be of type string received type object. Oh, URL. Wait, 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 wait. No, page URL is the argument of the function. I see. We need to replace it there as well, <laughs> and then we can pass in page URL. Okay, try again. Um, it's kind of working. <laughs> 
<laughs> we forgot to do this. Uh, somehow we have overwritten page URL. Oh, because we want to do that down here. Um, so this should be or page URL. I, sh I should have used um, like refactoring to replace the thing. Cool. Uh, and I actually don't need the trailing slash, I guess. I mean, I should probably check for it. Just do, just do that. Now we have a nice image URL. Let's catch up on the chat. I love the world. I do too. <laughs> Yeah, and definitely check out RabbitWorks. He has a ton of videos on Vue.js. Wee! Yeah, Murky is great. Oh wow, this is scrolling up. That's scrolling sideways. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, thanks, Joss. Yeah, so I, if you go to this website, coding.garden slash videos, search for Vue, search for React, search for web scraping, you can see all of my, uh, my past websites, or uh, past, past videos. PlateTrader.com. What is that? Should I click this? I'm going to hide my screen. Sounds suspicious. <laughs> All right, we have about 20 minutes, so... Um, Interesting. So plate trader allows you to trade license plates. Um, I'm not. I'm not going to scrape that website. Appreciate appreciate the link though. Uh, thanks, Bias. Uh, yeah, we made fifteen thousand subs. Uh, what does the coding garden CJP page give? That's a great question. It probably gives nothing because I have no no. <laughs> you're only probably only going to get the title and then I guess the description based on the stuff that we're doing. Um, coding garden. Yeah, that's it. I haven't done any search engine optimization. Um, I could, but I'm not really expecting people to get to this website from a search engine. They get to this website because I told them to go there <laughs> or they, they saw my YouTube channel. Um, yeah, YouTube page, dab. Try Google, oh yeah, that's a good call. HTTPS colon slash slash google.com. Oh wow, <laughs> Joseph Antoine Ferdinand Plateau's 218th birthday. Um, and then we have the image. The URL of the page actually goes to the image. That's super weird. Uh, you know what? I think we're not going to parse the OG URL. I think we're always just gonna use the URL that was passed in because that's the website that you're scraping, so that's what you would want to link to, I think. Cool. Dab. Uh, thanks, just some Aussie. Uh, yeah, we made it. Uh, it might also be a data URL. It can also be relative instead of absolute. Yeah, there's a lot of things I should check for. So, like, if the image begins with slash... Then nothing else... We want a slash. <laughs> Technically, that should work. Let's try with Quaka again. Um, yeah, so that still works. And then if it's base64 uh, or like a data URL, we've, we've borked it. It will not work. I should make a Udemy course. I've thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I missed the dollar sign. I got that. Thank you, though. Well, at the same time, make a decent amount of money for your time making us a better developer. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Like, all the content I make on YouTube is totally free. Anybody can watch it, but, yeah. Every stream is a Udemy course. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I, I put your, pa your page in a little while ago, uh, Mr. Demon Wolf. I think the only thing you're missing uh, is, like, keywords. Let's see. Yeah, and you have an LD JSON. You're not missing anything. Look at that. Oh no, you are missing keywords, but that is a that's a that's some good search engine optimization. <laughs> nice. What is that? Is that just an image tag? Wait. 
How did you send that, Alka? And I'm not seeing your message here. Weird. A cheer 100 image? Wow. I don't have bits enabled, though. I, I guess you just sent the image itself. <laughs> I, so I've, I've thought about this. I could potentially do live streams where only um, uh, a certain number of people can, can watch, but also it would be very interactive. So I could do something where everyone is in the same video chat, and it's like a classroom where um, I can talk about something, I can assign something, everybody will try it. Because everyone's sharing their screen, I could... Um, choose someone to show as an example or I would be able to help them remotely like truly a digital classroom and then we could take the content of that and edit it down into something that anybody could watch but yeah I've thought about these things uh, when it's free people don't appreciate it as much it's true it is so true <laughs> uh, the source for this oh no the one above it let's see what message was above that that one no that one. No. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> style text. Yeah, I disabled style text because people were doing weird things where they would, like, um, absolutely position a giant div so I just couldn't see anything on the page. So I got rid of style tags and style attributes. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Nice. Uh, not even a slash. You have to go down to the correct folder of the page, I think. Oh, because if it's missing a slash, then you don't use just the host name. It's relative to the full URL. Ah, yeah, I don't know if I really care about that. <laughs> this is super basic, but uh, really this check should be out here. Yeah, but that's that's a that's a good call, Oliver. Um, cool. So, um, if image dot starts with slash, then we want to do this. Um, else. Well, I guess we could we could parse it every time, um, but if that's the case, then we also need to do like the uh, path right here. I think we might get path in the parsed URL. Yeah, path. Um, so that way, if it starts with a slash, we know that it's from the root, so we put just the host name. But if it's not, then we need to put it at on the end of the path. We may need to add like a slash here or a slash here. Um, if you can find a website for me to test on, that would be wonderful. Uh, what do we have here, Rylex? Uh, there's no jQuery on this page either. <laughs> Paths are all... They are! <laughs> you have to think about opening slashes and trailing slashes and all that good stuff. Thanks for the bits! Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't have any monetization enabled on Twitch. That's really cool, actually. I've never seen a cheer... 100 is that like a hundred dollar cheer scope web <laughs> what do we have uh just a markdown image it should have loaded curious very curious <laughs> there's some crazy emotes yeah pop champ <laughs> right clicks for how anyway <laughs> Sign me in for the live classes. Yeah, it would be fun. Um, I have to, I'd have to figure out the logistics of it, but it'd be pretty sweet. A thousand dollars. Wow, that's pretty sweet. All right, see you later, RabbitWorks. Thanks for tuning in. Hello, Rabbit Kumar. Uh, thanks for the, uh, the congrats. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, it's not used on the site. It did show ten of the ten thousand K ones. Cool. All right, so I have 10 minutes. So in those 10 minutes, I'm going to take what we've built and build like a very basic front end. And you know what? I'm just going to use vanilla JavaScript because because that's that's what we do here on the coding garden. Um, so instead of that JSON route at the root, uh, we're just going to do express.static um, and we're going to serve the public folder. So in my directory here, 
I'm going to create a new folder. We'll call it public. Inside of there, I'm going to add an index.html. Um, we'll generate a basic HTML document. Better. <laughs> um, we'll just throw like an H1 called embedder. Um, we then need a paragraph tag. I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, should we add all these meta tags? I don't think we will. Um, create embeddable snippets. Uh, create, what's the description? Um, get website previews as embeddable snippets. That's what embedder is. <laughs> um, let's just add some basic styles. So we have a link tag. We'll just do styles.css. Uh, in here, we're going to have a new file. It's going to be styles.css. Um, for the body, we're going to set margin zero, padding zero. Um, for that h1, we're going to set a uh, text align of center. Um, on the whole body, let's just have a, a font family of um, Arial, Helvetica. I think that goes down to just like sans serif. Yep. Um, it's just going to be a white page with white text. Cool. Um, and let's actually just put this in like a header tag. And we'll say that the entire header has a text align center. All right. Uh, so if we now go to the root, um, need to restart. Okay. My express.static is not working. Um, I probably need to do like, um, oh, it needs to go up one directory. <laughs> Is that how express.static works? Embeddable website card. I like that, J-Man. Thank you. Create uh, embeddable... Website preview cards. I'm not doing express.static right. That's super weird. Uh, see you later, Cass. Thanks for tuning in. Ooh, what do we have here? We have a star that uh, draws itself. <laughs> uh, see you later, Willie Lumplump. Thanks for tuning in. It's how uh, it's odd how we refer to normal JavaScript as plain or vanilla, but not for other languages. Um, I think it's just because in JavaScript, there, there are so many coders out there that use libraries and don't just code in JavaScript itself, but yeah. ECMAScript. Uh, oh, I did app.get, thank you. So it should be like app.use, though technically, um, it should still work. And I think it does just need to be dot slash public because this script started uh, in the root of the folder. There we go. Embedder, get embeddable website preview cards. Uh, let's increase the font size here. Uh, font size. Um, let's do like 1.5 rems. Nice. Cool. And so below that, we just want um, a basic little form where you can input a URL. So we'll have like a main area. Uh, let's have a form. It's going to have an input. Uh, the name of this input is going to be uh, URL. The ID is going to be URL. Um, and then we'll have a button below that. Um, get preview. Cool. Um, Yeah, let's see what we get. We're gonna get some ugly stylings like that. Actually, is it because I'm not at 100? That's not half bad. Like the default button, it's not half bad. <laughs> um, but let's do this. Let's say main, we'll style main to 
uh, be centered and be of a certain width. So main has a width of 60% uh, and margin zero auto. And then let's say all inputs are display block and they have a width of 100%. I guess that happens automatically with display block. Let's see what we get. Cool. Uh, so it's display block, but we'll say width is 100%. Cool. Um, for that button, should we just do float right? I feel like we're being super weird here. We're not using any flex box. <laughs> Let's just say float uh, right. We might have to set it to display block. Well, there it is. Let's give it a little bit of margin. Uh, one rim, no, 0 0.5 rim. Nice little button. Uh, let's increase the button and input text size. Um, font size, uh, 1.5 rim. There we go. So we can enter a URL like quackajs.com like that, click get preview, and uh, that should generate the preview right below. Um, I guess we can add some border radius on the button. Uh, the 0.5 rim, make it, make it a little bit nicer. It's a little bit nicer. Get preview, cool. And then we'll show the preview right below. Um, now it's time for some JavaScripts. So in public, we'll create a new file, call it, um, app.js, because why not? <laughs> um, so we need to get a reference to uh, the form on the page so we can listen for when it's submitted. Um, I'm just going to say ID equals form. One thing I learned recently, which I did not know, is if an element has an ID, it's actually instantly available in the client side JavaScript as a variable. Who knew? So I can literally just say form, add event listener for uh, submit. Um, we'll create a function. Form submitted. Um, but yeah. This should give us access to the event. We can do event.prevent default. It's going to prevent the page from refreshing. Um, and then we should be able to just log um, URL.value. And I think this has, yeah, this has an ID of URL. So again, we can just do that. Super weird. Super weird. Uh, and then we'll just add app.js right about here. <laughs> DevTools form. Very cool. Yeah, we fixed that. Nice. It's the matrix. <laughs> uh, those hand-drawn sure modes are the original images they used when they were making that system. Oh, wow. Like the thingy. Uh, what's this? Actually finishing a project in one stream? Yes, that was the goal. <laughs> in honor of the 15,000 subscriber celebration, we're actually just going to do one thing in one stream. That's that's the goal. Um, form, action, method, get, target, blank, placeholder. You know what? This might actually work. Um, test. It worked. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, that's really great, though. Uh, you you got the URL slightly wrong. Um, did I break my website? No. Uh, it's it's a slash scrape slash URL. <laughs> Today I learned. Yeah, it's super weird. I I honestly don't recommend it. Like in terms, I think we're talking about the. Um, using a variable without declaring it. But yeah. Where'd you learn about that ID? On the streets? No, I forget, I forget what I was doing where I figured it out, or somebody told me, I don't know. Uh, I was just watching what you did, I see. Um, so yeah, we're gonna handle this with JavaScript. So we just need to do a fetch. Uh, let's store a variable called API URL. Um, and that's actually just gonna be slash scrape 
URL equals, and then we're going to append what the user put as the URL there. Um, so we'll say response equals await fetch with the API URL plus the um, uh, URL dot value. Um, this needs to be an async function. One thing I just thought of is like error handling. <laughs> so like, what happens if the fetch fails? Uh, and in that case, we just need to return an error message. We're not doing that yet. We absolutely should. Oh no, I don't want that. Where'd that come from? Um, and then our JSON is going to be awaiting response.json. We'll just log it. It went to colon your, oh, oh, that's because the, um, the, I, before I was printing, preventing the default action, um, that changed the URL, but it should be slash scrape. So let's try to try to scrape, uh, NASA. That was the initial one we did. Get preview. There we go. So we get back our, our nice little JSON object. So now that we have the object back, um, let's create some, some HTML to put on the page. Um, actually, let's just do object.keys. So we, we just have all the, all the property names. That's not right. Actually, let's see what happens if we do this. I think the server just spins because <laughs> um, let's see what the error is. Unhandled promise rejection. This error originated by throwing an error inside of an async function. So what we should do is in our backend route handler is wrap this await in a try catch. So let's do try. Try doing this. If it's successful, just respond and then catch it with an error. And um, we could create an express error handler, but this is literally our only route. So we're just going to res.json uh, an object. So message is error.message, like that. So now if we try that, uh, it has one property message. <laughs> but if we, if we look at it again, at the actual request, um, let's see, actual request, message, Connection refused. So it couldn't connect to this website, which is like a weird thing. Cool. So at least we're handling errors. Um, we should handle errors on the front end too, though, while we're thinking about it. So um, right here, we can say if response.ok, do the thing. Else. Uh, let's make a nice little spot to show an error message. So what about right here? We'll have a div. We'll give it ID of error. And in our JavaScript, we'll say uh, error dot text content equals uh, unable to get preview. Uh, and actually, that shouldn't be above the form. That should be like where the preview is going to be. So like right there. And then we'll have a div with an ID of preview where the actual preview is going to go. Um, let's style our error. So let's say our error has a color of red and a font weight of bold. And I guess the default font size. So now if we try with something weird, doesn't work. Um, oh, because I'm not setting setting the status code on the back end. So in our back end code, if an error happened, we should say like res.status 500. So that way on our front end, uh, if an error happens, uh, we do something meaningful. Unable to get preview. Very cool. Um, let's say that the form, so what, in here we have this um, this button and this is floated right. We, let's just add some margin bottom on the form so that um, all the stuff appears below it. So form margin bottom, I don't know, like five rem. That way all the results are like way below. Unable to get preview. 
Works for me. Let's put a period on that error message. <laughs> that. All right. Um, no error handling, live life on the edge. We we did it. We handle all the errors. <laughs> Automaton, welcome. Hello, Jaton. Uh, should that not be event dot value? Uh, no. So event is the actual form submitted event. Um, URL. And again, we're doing super weird things, but <laughs> in our HTML, all of these elements have IDs. So we're just referencing them by their ID in the JavaScript. I know it's weird. I've never done that before, but it works. So URL absolutely references the thing with ID URL and we're just grabbing its, uh, grabbing its value. Maybe make the property error, not message. Uh, so. Uh, because I set the status code as 500, I know that it's an error. So I, I like it to be something semantic like message. Um, so yeah, thanks for the keyboard command. Um, but yeah, it's a super cheap mechanical keyboard, but works well. <laughs> uh, what happens if you declare the variable, but filled with ID has the same name? Um, the variable you declare should overwrite it, right? So. Uh, and, it, and I guess it's all about scope. So when this thing loads, technically there's something on the scope called URL. But if I say const URL equals, I don't know, a string. I don't know, I'm going to set it equal to null. Now we should get a value, uh, an error that says like cannot read property value of null um, because we overrode the variable. Cannot read property value of null. Um, we could technically wrap the fetch in a try catch, but I think the only time that will happen is if there's like a network error, but should be fine. Cool. So many CSS IDs, it makes the panda sad. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't say this was good code. <laughs> I just said we're gonna code this quickly because um, I'm kind of over my stream time. I, I wanna be done pretty soon, but we, we built the backend scraping app. Now we have like a super basic website. You're gonna pass in a URL. Um, and then it scrapes it using our back end. And now we're going to use the information that it got back from scraping to generate a nice little HTML preview of that website. And then we'll give the user some HTML that they can copy and paste. We're almost done. Uh, thanks for the follow Kong. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, I mean, if you, typically for styling, you probably shouldn't use IDs. You should be using classes. You might be using something like BIM or something like that. Um, like I said, this website, super simple. I'm never going to look at it again after this. So, <laughs> uh, Patrick is asking, what's your opinion on wrist guards below the keyboard? Um, I don't use them. I try to maintain a good posture and like not rest my arms down. I don't know. Uh, Alka saying I use way more classes than IDs. Yeah. And, and the main reason I'm using IDs is because then I can reference them in the JavaScript without selecting them, which is probably, it's a horrible idea. Nobody should do this. Yeah, don't do this. Um, okay, so now we have uh, the properties. Let's create like a nice little HTML string and add it to the page. Um, so um, magic variables, exactly. <laughs> so let's create like a, uh, a property called HTML. It's gonna be just one nice big template string. Uh, it's gonna be a div. Uh, inside of that, we'll have, um, you know what? I think we're gonna actually embed We'll probably just do like inline styles. So it's kind of like styled well by default. Uh, that way you can copy and paste it into any website and it's going to look good. Um, but right here, we're going to say uh, json.title. Um, and then we'll just say the preview is going to be this HTML. Preview.innerHTML equals HTML. Now, if you want to cross site script this website, all you got to do is create a website where uh, the title or any of these other properties is actual HTML. And then when this does that, it will uh, actually run the HTML. Like I said, this is a bad idea. Horrible idea. Should never do this. Um, oh, well, that should fail. Unable to get preview. But if we copy the actual URL, get preview. There we go. Quaka, live scratch pad for JavaScript in your editor. Very cool. Um, so if this was successful, we should actually, and actually when, when you submit the form, um, let's set the error to be nothing. And that way it just removes the error. So that should be good. Get preview. There we go. So we see that. That's nice. Um, 
I guess the only bad thing in IDE, linting vars, thinking they're undeclared. Yeah, and that's what's happening right now. My linter is like, you're using all these variables. I've never heard of these variables. Uh, te technically, I could create a new ESLint file for uh, browser-based code. And it would at least know what fetch is. All in yeah, all the other things it would absolutely complain about though. I skipped Boyan's question. I'm sorry. What did Boyan say? Uh, which status codes are considered as an error? Um, 400, 500 status code range. Uh, the 200 status codes range usually means okay, like 200 or 201. Uh, the 300 status code range is usually a redirect, but it's still like successful. HTTP status codes. Um, yeah, so 100 is informational, 200 is successful, 300 is redirection. Specifically with fetch, which is built into the browser, uh, response.ok is not ok if it's anything but 200, probably 100, 200, or 300. I'm just guessing 100. I've never even seen a 100 status code, though. It's a thing. But yeah, if it's a 400 or a 500, OK is going to be false. Do what I say, not what I do. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, thanks for the follow, Super Effects. I appreciate it. Uh, do what I should have done and had done in, in the right way. Yes. <laughs> yeah, if you have the time. Uh, OK. Um, 400, 404 is also OK, sort of. <laughs> Uh, PrunerBot isn't running. Glad, um, yeah, it's it's not running. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, this div will have a style, and we'll say um, outline is uh, one pixel solid gray. Oh, look at my green highlighting. <laughs> there we go. Got a nice little uh, solid gray outline. Uh, we can also give it some padding. Let's say like one rem. Should push push the stuff inside of it in a little bit. There we go, very good. Um, I guess below the title, we can put the image, if there is an image, so let's do that. So try that. There's the image. Um, let's see. Image SRC equals. Hmm. I tried it earlier and a favicon worked. Oh, colon colon slash. That's an error on my back end. Let's look at my scraping code colon slash slash. That's, that's, that's a, that's not a good thing. Let's, let's see what this is doing wrong. Oh, it, so the protocol has a colon on it already. I see. There we go. So now if we go back to the web page and we do this, try to scrape. Oh, let's, let's scrape ourselves. <laughs> uh, then that one just doesn't have an image at all, which is different um, from something that does at least have a favicon. So we'll try this. There we go. We get the nice little icon. Um, but we'll also have logic that basically says if there is no uh, image, then don't show the image at all. Um, let's kind of just wrap this in a, a ternary. So if json.image, then um, going to do that otherwise nothing so if we try to uh, scrape ourselves oh I need to refresh if we try to scrape ourselves it doesn't try to show the image that's a good thing hello Lily welcome to the stream uh, Alka has the the answer for us the okay read only property of the response interface contains a boolean stating whether or not the response was successful in the status code range of 200 to 299 interesting so if it was a redirect then technically static uh, response dot okay is false interesting yeah we figured that out double colon uh, how about json dot entries for displaying the props also um, we could do that 
I guess I'll do that. But I mainly just wanted to have a quick reminder of what's what's available here. So, yeah. Uh, and maybe try getting the first re-embed image before the icon. Um, I, I do I do do that. So uh, let's try NASA. NASA.gov. If we pass that in to our thing here, there we go. That's a nice, what nice little NASA image. Um, should I center this whole thing? I think we'll center this whole thing. Let's set the whole div to uh, text align center. We try to get NASA. Look at that. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> Uh, fetch should just follow the redirects. I, I, I agree. I think Axios does that under the hood. You probably, I've never came across that, but you'd probably have to code that yourself, um, if you're using fetch. Or Jan is saying it does, oh, maybe that was to something else. The read-only redirect property of the response interface indicates whether or not the response is the result of a request which was redirected. This is using a Q element. Oh, for a quote. Very cool. <laughs> I like that. And it's citing an actual website. Cool. <laughs> uh, good morning, Adam. Welcome to the stream. Uh, okay, so we have the image. The next thing we need is the, um, the actual description of the website. Let's see what we get. NASA.gov brings you the latest news, images, and videos from NASA Space Agency. It's pretty great. We're doing it. Uh, let's see what we get if we try to get the info from Quaka. Nice. <laughs> we could set the images to 100% width. Um, so, like, we give the card, uh, like, a default width. No. I'll, I'll leave it. It's fine. It's fine. Um, should we left align the description? Let's see what that looks like. I think that looks okay. And then if we uh, grab like the NASA website, get preview. I like that, left align. Um, though, you see the image goes outside of it. Let's give the image a max width of 100%. So we try that again. That's good, and it's responsive. Look at that. <laughs> uh, we could do like break word on the text, but I think that's fine. Uh, don't think I can handle hacking NASA yet. Totally saying <laughs> we're not hacking NASA. So we're we're basically extracting the metadata of the web page, like the uh, the image, the description, the title, uh, so that way we can create a nice little uh, embeddable HTML snippet like this. Um, okay, so we have the title, the image. I guess for the URL, um, we'll add a link at the bottom. And um, we'll just put the put the URL so json.url, and it will also link there. Nice. Um, I guess I could left align that too. Um, and if that's the case, we really only want text align center of um, the title and the image. All right, we'll try, uh, let's try this indiana.gov website. Indiana General Assembly. Um, something happened with the image that we requested. Um, slash static image logo. Not found on this server. Well, it came from the, um,
came from the content. Um, here we go. OG image is here. It gave us a bad image. <laughs> we can't really do anything about that. I mean, I mean, technically, we could try requesting the image, and if it results in a 404, we don't include it, but I don't want to get that complicated. The image is like a meme. <laughs> uh, can I also do this for the image? So uh, if json.image is a thing, yeah, I could probably do that. Um, uh, no. I don't... I think So I let's try it, because if I do this instead of the ternary it's going to render the url and the thing on the right hand side i'm pretty sure because it'll do this and this meaning we get both i'm pretty pretty sure let's see um let's try with this i guess not that's good uh, though now this is left aligned, I wanted the image to be, oh, now because the parent container, here's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to keep text align center on the parent because that will, uh, that will keep the image centered. Uh, but then anything that we want to be not text align centered, we're just going to directly, um, center it with a style tag like that. Um, technically, we could generate um, a style attribute as well that we use to embed, um, but having the inline styles is going to make it uh, a bit smaller. Oh, that should break. Unable to get preview. And then we use this. Get preview. There we go. Um, it didn't, it didn't left align the anchor tag though. Oh, is it because anchor tags aren't display block? Let's look at it. Uh, text align left does nothing. Um, does, can it have a width property of 100%? Um, but if we just say display block, that's what does it. So uh, by default, it has display inline. Um, and when something has display inline, um, it's not going to listen to the width or the text align property. So if we make it display block, um, it will listen to that text align property. Go. There we go. Oh, and, and uh, was that Kaizen? Who was that? Oh, um, uh, Mihai Coders. Uh, it worked. I thought it wasn't going to work, but it, it actually worked. So that's good to know. Um, I may, it may be that, because I'm, I'm used to doing something like this in React and JSX. And uh, it does not like that. If the thing on the left-hand side has a value, it's going to actually render the value itself. So that's that's good to know. And thank you for the suggestion. <laughs> Hello, friends. Uh, what's up, Greg? Uh, we're we're sort we made we made like a very basic be uh, version of it. So right now we're building the front end, but we built a simple little scraper API. Um, so if you go to slash scrape and you pass in a URL. It gives you back a JSON object with all of the meta tags, like title, image, description, all that good stuff. And now our front end is making that request and then creating this card. And then we're going to give the user a um, a nice little snippet that they can copy and paste to embed that somewhere. Yeah, no worries. Uh, what you did um, made sense. Cool. Hello, Shaggy. Welcome. I'd like Tailwind. <laughs> I've used it before. It's okay. All right, what do we got, Kevin? An SVG with a P tag and a style and an anchor tag <laughs> and an image tag with an on error. Um, interesting. I think this is trying to do um, what someone was doing earlier where it's like HTML mangling where you don't exactly close things, but then it loads them anyways. Good try. Uh, Justin says, congrats. Thank you, Justin. Justin's been been tuning in for a while. Uh, web Dev Student, yep, that's basically what it does. So we built a backend uh, API. So if you look at, uh, we have a, we have an Express app, and then we have this scraping endpoint which takes a URL param, and then our scraper is using Axios and Cheerio. So it just makes a basic Git request to get the HTML of the website. 
Uh, once we have that HTML, we load it into this thing called Cheerio. Cheerio lets us do jQuery-like stuff on the back end. And so once we've loaded it in, we can select the meta properties and uh, the images and, and different things like that to create a nice little JSON object. So that gives us this. And now we're building a front end that makes that request, gets back the JSON, and we're, and we're generating some HTML that people can copy and paste. Uh, a framework to serve the HTML, uh, no, it's just static. So in my Express app, I have a static serve right here. So when a request comes into Slash, it's just straight up sending back the HTML file, which has my embedded JavaScript and style tags. Uh, Sharia saying, first time catching me live. Congrats on the 15K. I appreciate it. The HTTP version of the image works. Hmm. You mean instead of like HTTPS? Not, not, not quite sure what you're saying. Nope, it's just all static. <laughs> uh, we can scrape the OEmbed version too. So we're using um, some, uh, we're using like the OG meta tags. Um, is OEmbed like a different uh, protocol? A format for allowing embedded pres presentation of a URL. Um, Oh. Excuse me. So your website can expose an endpoint where it will return something like that. Interesting. I've never actually heard of that. Cool. Uh, you're welcome, web dev student. Um, OK, so what are, what are we missing? <laughs> we have the. Um, we can add the keywords. Yeah, let's add the keywords in like italics at the bottom. Let's do this. So we have um, the link, and then let's just do like a small tag with the keywords inside of it. JSON dot um, keywords, and we'll give this a um, you text decoration. Is it text decoration? Um, Text style? I don't know. How do we make this italics? We'll figure it out. But if we do a small, um, that has no keywords. I think the NASA website has keywords. Um, what we should do is when there's an error, we should also set the preview to be nothing. Error, and then um, HTTPS colon slash slash NASA dot gov. Get preview. There we go. Um, do we not have keywords? Let's look at the network request. NASA might have been one that, that didn't actually have um, uh, keywords. Yeah, they don't have any keywords. Does the Indiana website have keywords? That does have keywords. Let's try this website. Go. Very cool. There's that. Um, OK. Font style italic. That probably will do it. Let's try it. <laughs> yeah, look at that. OK. So this will be a small. We'll do text align left, font style italics. Oh, wait, what am I doing? What's happening? <laughs> so this is a style attribute, and we have, sty we have CSS inside of it. So uh, font style italic. Um, that should do it. And, and then again, we really only want to show this if json.keywords is a thing. So do this. We'll do this. Like so. Um, I guess the Indiana website really isn't the best because it uh, <laughs> it has a broken um, what do you call it? it has a broken image even in the the meta description. So we do that. Get preview. 
Um, I guess they don't have keywords either. Let's add some margin bottom on our main here. So it, um, um, there's some empty space at the bottom of the page. Uh, so let's just do like five rims. Get preview. Yeah, and then we can scroll a little bit past it. Cool. So the Twitch developer's website doesn't have keywords. Uh, what about a Wikipedia article? I didn't even think about that. A partition in number theory. Cool. Let's try to uh, let's try to scrape this. Let's see what we get. Go. Oh, that's very nice. Partition number theory. We have a, a nice little image. Um, a description and then a link. Okay. Cool. Oh, it lurks, works on the HTTP link, but not the HTTPS link. I see. I see, I see. So for that Indiana website. Um, that's unfortunate, though, because we're just copying the protocol of the URL itself. So uh, comma separate the keywords. Uh, I think they already are. They come that way from, from the back end, don't they? What's, like, the only website? Well, oh, no, the Indiana website has it, but they have broken. Um, I don't know. Does Google have keywords? Let's see. Um, no keywords. Yeah, and thanks for the tip, Army. We could have used an M tag. That's true. Something good for me. <laughs> what is this? Uh, it's a summary. Inside of it, there's an image. Okay. Let's try it. Ah! <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, what is this? Is this just uh, Unicode? Yeah, just emoji characters. Cool. Uh, space SpaceX has everything. Thank you. SpaceX.com. Go. Nice. Uh, again, we did the text align left, but a small tag is not display block by default. So we need to set this to display block. Go. Text to line left. Yeah, we'll give this anchor tag a little bit of little bit of margin. Um margin bottom. 0 0.5 rims. Nice. I think that's it. We have the LD JSON. We'll just include that. Um I think we're good. I think that's it. Yeah. All right. So now what we'll do um, is we'll have a pre tag below all of this. So um, we have our preview, and then this will be um, our embed. And so we'll say um, there's our preview, and we'll say embed dot inner HTML is going to be a pre tag. Oh no, uh, text area, it'll be a text area uh, with the HTML inside of it. And we can set some custom styles on the text area so that it has like a mono space font and things like that. Um, if there's an error, we'll also clear out the inner HTML of the embed. All right, moment of truth. This is why we all came here. Get preview, there's that and <laughs> Here's a text area with the content, so we can copy and paste this and put it on a website. Cool. Uh, let's style this text area. Um, we'll style it in the CSS because the, the styles don't need to go with it. Um, did we just give it a class? No, we gave it an ID. So the element with ID source uh, we'll have a font family of, uh, let's see, we need a monospace font. Uh, courier new, courier monospace, cool. Uh, we'll have a font size of uh, one rim and have a width of 100% and a margin top of two rims. Preview. Cool. 
Um, I guess we can set number of rows on the text area. So it has like 10. Cool. Um, we could add a little button that says like copy to clipboard. But yeah. Beetlejuice and emojis. All right, what do you got for us, Kevin? Uh, is index. Oh, I've never heard of this. What is that? Hypertext markup language. This feature is obsolete, although it may still work in some browsers. Um, puts a text field in a page for querying the document. Interesting. I've literally never heard of this. Very cool. <laughs> uh, that's a top level joke, Alka. <laughs> cool. All right. Um, I mean, I think we've kind of done it, right? This is what we set out to build. We put in a URL, we get back a, an embedded preview, and then you can copy and paste uh, and paste it there. Um, I guess let's do this. Let's just add like an H3 with a description of what you should do here. Um, copy the HTML below. How do you spell below? Below. Copy the HTML below. Oh, that's it. That's all we'll say. <laughs> um, and maybe we put uh, just like preview in front of um, all of this. Go. There's our preview. And there's our copy the HTML. Cool. Um, I think at that point we can actually just get rid of the margin top though, because that H3 has some some automatic margin, which uh, keep uh, gives us the spacing. Cool. Yeah. What more? What more can we do? Whoa. H1s inside H1s gives a uh, uh okay that makes sense because they're block level elements, so then it becomes vertical. Cool. <laughs> uh. Uh, should be an H2 to be accessible. Um, okay, because it's the second header on the page. Do we have an H1? Uh, we do have an H1. Cool, let's do it. There, go. Cool. We did it. Sadly, the style stuff is stripped. Oh, uh, yeah, because I don't have, <laughs> I got rid of all the style attributes and style tags and stuff. Uh, my web self can't think about re zero rem. Not quite sure what that means. Uh, H1s would grow in the size because of the M. Well, I'm using rem instead of M. So this is, it's slightly smaller than that one, which is okay. Uh, but I might have H1 set to rem. Uh, yes, maybe, I don't know. Where do these go? <laughs> uh, they go to an element on the page with um, ID A, B. Wait, 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 wait. Click on the right column. Hey, because <laughs> it goes to the one on the left. Um, uh, A11Y stands for accessibility. So in the word accessibility, there are 11 characters between A and Y. Um, and accessibility is all about making your page accessible to people that may be using something like a screen reader or maybe, um, yeah, they may they have trouble viewing the page. Uh, so they need some sort of assistive technology. Um, and it helps to be correct in doing that. Cool. I think I'm done here. Can anyone think of anything else that I should add to this thing or should we just ship it? Ship it. <laughs> um, and there's some questions that were asked a while back. I don't know if any of these people are still watching, but uh, Mahidra asked uh, two hours ago, I know React. Do I spend my time learning Gatsby or Next.js? So um, one thing that Mattia mentioned is um, these things, Gatsby and Next.js, they give you search engine optimization. So by default, uh, React is a JavaScript-based website. So 
uh, when certain search engines load your website, they may not run the uh, the JavaScript on the page, so they're not going to see any content of the page. Um, when you use something like Next.js, this does server-side rendering, meaning instead of just being a JavaScript application on first page load, it actually renders the HTML. So if a search engine is crawling your website on the very first request, Next.js is gonna respond with some actual HTML. So um, that's better for search engine optimization because your site will load faster. It will able, be able to parse out the description and follow links and different things like that. Where if your site is just JavaScript, then, um, it would have to run the JavaScript, which can be a little bit slower. That said, a lot of modern search engines do run JavaScript on your page. Um, the other thing is uh, is Gatsby. So uh, Next.js, think of this as like very dynamic. So you have a, a Node.js backend application where uh, you kind of build it with React, but Next.js allows you to render parts of that React app on the server side. Um, the way Next.js works though is the moment um, the page is ready, so the initial page load, that's gonna be server-side render. That's gonna send HTML to the client. But after that, if a user clicks on a link, that's actually behaving like a React website. So it's a single page application. So that's one of the major benefits of Next.js. Uh, Gatsby goes in a completely, totally, uh, a somewhat different direction. So instead of having a dynamic backend server, when you're ready to deploy your rep website, you build it with Gatsby and it pre-renders everything. So it generates all the possible HTML for your entire website. So that way when you deploy it, um, there might be a little bit of JavaScript hanging around, but for the most part, it's just static HTML sites. Uh, and so Gatsby is cool for that because you can just host your website after it's built on a static web server, whereas something like Next.js would require a server that runs Node. Um, so do you, spend, do you spend your time learning these things? It's really a matter if you wanna build websites that way. I prefer to build uh, single page applications with either React or Vue and then build a, a JSON API on the back end. I, I really haven't done anything that does server side rendering, um, mainly because I'm building internal business applications. I'm building things that people aren't gonna find on a search engine. Um, so it's really up to you. They're interesting technologies and a lot of people are using them, so yeah. Uh, Nicholas is asking, how can I benchmark different functions? Um, I really don't have an answer because I've never really done it before, but you can search for this. Um, so in the Chrome DevTools, there's a way of timing your functions. So you can do that. Um, in just regular Node.js, you could literally just log the date. Um, that said, they do have like a, a built-in profiler. I have no experience with this, but I'll just say it's absolutely possible. So if you Google this question, and add the word JavaScript onto it, you'll find an answer. Uh, Harsh is asking, and this is in reference to building an app that has um, JSON web tokens. Um, how would I blacklist if the user has changed the password or the account is deleted with a JSON web token? So let's say a user um, has signed into your website and you issued them a JSON web token. Um, and later on, that user goes in and changes their password. So what you wanna do is invalidate any existing JSON web tokens because they weren't created um, after the user had changed their password. Um, the way you can do that is uh, with refresh tokens and potentially like a login count. Um, I will direct you to some videos by uh, Ben Awad. He has a wonderful YouTube channel. He's been posting a lot of really great content lately. Um, I mean, and even before that, but lately a lot of stuff has to deal with, or deals with uh, authentication and like, should you use cookies or should you use local storage? Um, he posted a video today about like form best practices and a video the other day about ORMs. Um, they're, they're really cool videos, but if you look, uh, yeah, his most recent uploads. Um, How to store JSON web token for authentication. I'm pretty sure it's this video where he shows, maybe it's another, really if you just search his channel for like JWT, he has some nice little diagrams uh, where he talks about um, how you would do something like implementing a refresh token mechanism or implementing some sort of login count so that if a user resets their password, all of the old tokens can be instant, instantly invalidated. Um, check out his videos. He's, he's said a lot of good stuff about it. So there we go. Whoa! <laughs> uh, good morning, Mark. Welcome to the stream. 
Yes, uh, same thing. So if you've ever seen the abbreviation I-18N, that stands for internationalization because there are 18 letters between the I and the N in that word. Yeah, ship it. Send it. <laughs> Not sure if there's more. Everyone, yeah, okay, everyone says that what I built is good. <laughs> so for those of you that maybe just joined or haven't been here the whole time, this is what we have. We have a website. Let's just click I'm feeling lucky, see what we get. Uh, so we get this URL. We built this website where you can put in a URL, click Get Preview. It reaches out, it grabs the title, the image, any description, anything like that, and it creates this nice little preview card. And then it also gives you the HTML that you can copy and paste uh, to show that preview somewhere else. That's about it, we did it. <laughs> Ship it. Ship it and move on to the next project. I'm gonna stop streaming is what I'm gonna do. <laughs> uh, source equals pound on alert, oh, what's up? <laughs> Uh, unfortunately that did not work, but nice try. So I build for the dark web. Um, I have websites that have dark themes, like color themes, not like morbid themes. Cool. All right. I'm going to push all this code to GitHub. This was super fun. We had a lot of fun just chatting, building this thing. We have a nice little API. Uh, I guess someone mentioned we could have some API documentation. Let's just add that really quick. <laughs> should be easy enough, like on the home page. Um, let's put it like at the bottom. Docs. P tag. Um, this website also exposes an API. And then we'll just do a pre-tag and we'll say get to slash scrape URL equals um, for example this um, that um we should really put the um the domain of the website that you're on uh because if we ever deploy it instead of being like localhost 15,000 it'll be uh that but regardless I'm just going to do that there we go so now we have some, some documentation. This website also exposes an API. For example, make a git request on the URL slash scrape and pass in that. Cool. Um, but um, let's find another Wikipedia article. Number theory. That's a cool image. Hopefully that's the one that it shows us. So we can try that. Number theory. <laughs> cool. I like it. We're done. We did it. Well done. Thank you. We are greater than 15K now. Yeah. Um, it's, it, I mean, it's probably like 15,005. <laughs> um, I don't know if this is going to work. Because I, I built this website a while back to get the subscriber count, and YouTube doesn't provide granular um, sub counts anymore. Um, it only provides like rounded numbers. So, yeah. The dark web is non-directly accessible websites like authentication required stuff, internal use. Oh, yeah. It's technically like anything that's not like indexed on Google or anything like that. Um, sure, yeah. Uh, see you later, Harsh, uh, and thanks for tuning in for the answer. I didn't know that you'd still be watching. Um, but yeah, I, I realize I just pointed you to another resource, but like I said, he has really good videos and really good uh, explanations. Should be easy enough. <laughs> The dark web is still alive. Yeah, absolutely. It's out there. And the majority of the internet is inaccessible or not indexed by a search engine. <laughs> is this Vue.js? It is Vue.js, yeah. Um, but I'm not... This doesn't get rendered in the context of Vue. Cool. All right. This was super fun. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out and celebrating the 15K subscribers with me. Um, I appreciate each and every one of you, everyone that's clicked that button. You didn't have to click that button, sorry, but you did click that button, and, and I appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, I think my, my next, I'm going to take a break tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to try to stream katas on Wednesday. 
Don't know if I'm actually going to do a morning stream like I mentioned, but we'll at least definitely have a, an evening, at least definitely, maybe, possibly, most likely have an evening Code Cottage stream on Wednesday, so tune in for that. Uh, thanks for the follow, Nathan Moog. I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, this is great. Thanks for sticking around, and uh, here's to another 15K. We'll have a, I guess, I guess, like, what is the next celebration? I guess 20K is a nice, nice round number. I don't know. We'll get there. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Josh. Uh, thanks, Josh, for the congrats. Hearts for everyone. Uh, thanks, Christian, for the uh, the congrats. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do. Um, I was I was about to leave. I totally was, but I had I have this idea. Let me know what you all think of this idea. I'm gonna hide my screen for just a second. So, um, actually, let's do this one. Okay. <laughs> so, I have this idea where I will create probably a separate streaming account. Maybe I'll, I don't know if I'll do it on coding garden or not, but I created this thing which shows Twitch chat, but it renders the comments. It's similar to my chat manager. But what I'm thinking is if I, sh if I, if I create a stream where it's literally just this chat and the people in the chat can see the chat, would it create some sort of like, um, I don't know, like public art project <laughs> where essentially um, this this thing that's just streaming 24 seven allows people to inject HTML and it actually renders it on the page. And could you create cool and interesting things? Um, so let's let's just try that really quick. <laughs> uh, I think it's this. Oh, I need to change it to be a uh, coding garden. I was actually testing it last night. I pointed pointed it at the uh, the Fortnite stream because that just had messages scrolling in like crazy, and it actually handled it. So cool. Uh, and and this will this will actually only work on Twitch. So if you want to um, try this out, then go go to Twitch. I'll send the URL on YouTube really quick. HTTPS colon slash slash Twitch TV slash um, coding garden. So there's the link. If you're watching on YouTube, come join us on Twitch because after this, we're also going to go raid a channel. So come over to Twitch. Come on over. And I'm going to start this up. Just a second. Oh, that's why. <laughs> I was in the progress pro process of hitting something else. Okay, kill that, start that. Um, okay, <laughs> so, so here we go. Um, I think I'm actually going to, I'm gonna close my, um, my other, my chat manager window. So uh, everyone watching on YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Uh, thanks for the follow, Dabjul Maros. Um, Satya, you're super late, but come join us on Twitch. Uh, see you later, Jesus. Wonderful GIF, awesome build, thank you. Good night, ARMY, see you later. Um, I'm not gonna render a PHP. Um, uh, Alka says, I can give you access to all of the Twitch chat. <laughs> I just want to do it for a single channel because it's, I'll show you because it's kind of like you watch the chat on the right hand side, but then you see the thing on the left hand side. Uh, the Twitch terms of service doesn't allow unattended streams of over 30 minutes. Interesting. But there, I mean, what about those streams where, um, people are just like streaming chickens? <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. Again, thanks everyone. Uh, I'm going to close this tab. So any, um, any YouTube chats that come in, I'm not going to see them anymore, but come, come join us on the Twitch side. And, um, oh, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to do that, but there's that. <laughs> so yeah, I want to make myself a little bit smaller, but, uh, any, any message you send in Twitch right now will be rendered on this page. I, I don't have it automatically resetting every five minutes. Um, but, um, I could, and I will. And, and so here's the idea, like this thing is just always running 
and every five minutes it just wipes the page clean. But um, uh, before it wipes the page clean, it takes a snapshot of the whole page and then uploads it and shares it on Twitter. So it's kind of like this community uh, art project where uh, any 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 command that people send is going to be run on here. Um, I I have attempted to disable scripts, so you can inject styles. You can display images. You can probably do audio and video, <laughs> um, but you uh, you can't do scripts. So what, did, what did Alka try to do? I think I I accidentally closed the chat. Um, yeah, I disabled iframes too. I think that's the thing. Like somebody could should add some really weird stuff um, if, if they if I let them put iframes in here. So I'm just gonna sit back. See what you guys can do. Uh, thanks for the follow, Icky Sticky Bandit. <laughs> thanks for the follow, Joshua Ferris. It's pretty good. <laughs> what does this say? Didn't close it. Ah, it's still rendered. That? I should look at the actual Twitch chat too to see what's coming through. <clears throat> so, uh, what do you think? Is this is this a, a bad idea? An interesting idea? I guess technically it could be um, against the terms of service to stream something like this. Maybe this is what I'll do every now and then: is just sit here and let people inject style tags and stuff like that. <laughs> Good idea. Okay. It seems like a, a fun, you know, like community art project or something like that. Uh, thanks for the follow, uh, get a chew. Thanks for the follow, Master Agent Miyazaki. Uh, choose a file. <laughs> uh, good morning, Satya. If I manage the chat, it would be allowed. Yeah, I, I thought of it more of being something just automatic, though. So it's just sitting there and always running. Um, but that might be against the Twitch term, terms of service. I'm very bold. <laughs> uh, what about things like Twitch Play? What is Twitch Play? I don't know. I don't know what that is. Straight up Twitch plat chat plays the game. Oh, yeah, I've heard of things like that. Like things like where you literally see Pokemon on the screen and people send chat commands that will like change where the, par the character goes on the screen and stuff like that. But yeah. Thank you, Satya. I want to see something interesting. I'll, I'll give you some hints. Like do um, like a div tag with a uh, absolute positioning and um, some large styling post an SVG um, yeah uh, hello Jonathan it's been a while since you used twitch uh, I kind of want to make a twitch paints now yeah so that would be super cool so like what if every message that contains like an XY coordinates and a color sets the color of that pixel and so now you have a bunch of chat messages coming in that are setting the pixels of a, of the page. <laughs> um, the scale didn't seem to work, Alka. Scale 10M. Yeah. Div style background color red, height 100% with 100%. Um, Make it, make sure that it has uh, position, oh, sorry, position fixed, not position abs absolute. So if you do position fixed, that's going to automatically put it in the top left corner. Um, yeah. Oh, that would work. 
set set the <laughs> set the autoplay attribute, and it it should play the play the audio. Um, not that. Say something funny now, CJ. Uh, it has autoplay. It could be because I haven't interacted with it. <laughs> Hopefully that wasn't audible enough. Oh, I'm over here now. Look at that. <laughs> um, hopefully that wasn't audible enough to um, get me a copyright violation. Master Agent Maya Miyazaki. Damn, I reached the character limit. What did you try to send? Or I guess it wouldn't let you send it because there was too many characters. Hey, that's me. That's me. <laughs> Oh, it's a video. Uh, you have to add the controls tag, I think, to play it. Oh, there you go. You did it. Uh, uh. Oh, is it on auto loop? Or <laughs> cool. CJ, what's up? I'm over here now. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> nice. Cool. Div uh, font size equals 0 0.1 rim. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Alka just set the font size of the entire page to be 1.1 rim. Uh, but what could possibly go wrong has a style attribute which overrides that. <laughs> the style classes. Um, nothing. <laughs> Everything. I'm hijacking your div. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. <laughs> All right, I'm going to I'm going to reset it. There you go. Hello. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Uh <sighs> Uh, oh, there's Alka just sent a hi message. Oh, you can't see it because it's behind me. I'll, I'll move over here now. There it is. Bottom right. Hi. <laughs> hi. This. All your divs are belong to us. <laughs> Um, someone should should set some uh, some Z index to get their their divs on top. Um, yeah, because that one just has an uh, a position absolute z top zero left zero. So if you add another div with a higher Z index, uh, it should pop up on top of this. Oh, oh, that's awesome. Alka's uh, attempting to import a new font. Okay, I'm going to refresh because no one's really overriding this one. Z index 999. All your div are... Oh, yeah, you just overrode it. Cool. <laughs> All right, I'm going to refresh. Alka, you should send that font again because that would be cool to change the font of the page. Someone should try to change it to Comic Sans, right? That'd be great. Background linear gradient. Ooh. <laughs> Body, font family, cursive. It might be, you might need a more specific collect, uh, selector. 
Green is better. Hmm. So these, this is a span that has a class username. Uh, body font family is not being overridden for some reason. <laughs> Ooh, keep calm. <laughs> There we go. Uh, what flag is that? Uh, Angel added an audio tag. Um, I don't see anything though. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> um, I think this is the message from uh from Shaggy from Angel. Yeah. An audio tag, it's just not visible. I think if so, we tried. If you set autoplay, it might start playing. Cool. To all the people watching on YouTube, um, right now I'm only looking at Twitch chat because that's what this <laughs> that's what this viewer is doing. Oh, is this a text? Cool. Hello, friends. All right, I'm gonna refresh the page. <laughs> um, but if you go over to Twitch, Twitch.tv/CodingGarden, you can participate in this. Oh, the Iceland flag. <laughs> awesome. Fifteen thousand subs. Thank you. Um, but if you go over to Twitch, you can see uh, or attempt to uh, add messages to this page. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it going for another five minutes, and then we'll we'll try to raid someone. Ooh, nice centered uh, square. I like that. Hi. <laughs> Let's see. I could just added a GIF, but I don't see it. it. Should be top left. Oh, you might. I guess maybe you need to add a width on it. There we go. Sticky, sticky bandit. <laughs> Stop it with the absolute. <laughs> yeah, now I can't now I can't click on the uh, um let's delete that. <laughs> it's a two second audio. What is it? No problem okay, is am I gonna re regret this? I'm gonna turn the sound down. It's pretty good. For some reason, the autoplay attribute doesn't work. Cool. Whoa! It's me! <laughs> nice. Um, how did you fix it? Top zero, left zero, right zero, bottom zero.
instead of position fix. I don't see what you did different. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, like, I, I mean, that's why if I did this, if I were to make this like a standalone stream, I would not put it under my account because some weird stuff could happen. <laughs> All right, I'm going to refresh the page. This, this is a good one, though, Alka. All right, you have two minutes and 30 seconds. You got to do you got to do the weirdest stuff you can think of. Hey, stop it. No, what is this? <laughs> Somebody tried to play a video. Uh. Refreshing the page. Be nice. You have to be nice. <laughs> Abort! <laughs> it's just Mr. Robot. Robot. Are we trying to make a navigation? Home, about, and contact? Okay. No worries. <laughs> I mean, it's bound to happen. There's also just random people dropping by the stream, too. So. Oh, buddy. If I were to scroll down. Oh, okay. <laughs> what, what, what happens if I scroll down? This needs to be in an art museum. Wouldn't, that would be really cool, right? <laughs> like it would, it's, it's like living art. The, anybody that walks by could inject their own styles to make something interesting. Error. Embedded data could not be displayed. What did we try to do? Uh, we did an object with a source. <laughs> Watch out for that bam uh, All right, you have 47 seconds, and then I'm going to end the stream. Well, we're going we're gonna to raid someone. We're going to raid someone. It's just raindrops. Oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay, here. This, this is what I mean. This is beautiful. The text is floating around. We've got a marquee on top. <laughs> who, who did this? <laughs> uh, right likes with the marquee. That's great. Um, and... <laughs> All right. I think I'm going to end it there. Uh, thanks, everyone, for participating in this. I, like I said, I think it's an interesting idea, but um, I might... Here, I'll, I'll do one last refresh so these latest messages can come in. Yeah, because if you do a marquee, you're going you're gonna to have to set um, some... What do you call it? Uh, Z-index, so it appears on top of everything. <laughs> um, but yeah, if I, left, if I just left this running, people could do some we really weird things. I could potentially run everything, every single URL through some sort of like uh, filtering, content filtering API to prevent stuff like that from happening, but you never know. Look at all the marquees. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do one last refresh. Get your messages in now while I figure out who we're going to raid. <laughs> So, uh, sorry for getting rid of everything. I'm sorry. Pop champ. <laughs> no. <laughs> Should we raid Fortnite? That'd be pretty useless, wouldn't it? It's still on the the black hole image. Let's see. Is there anybody on the live coders team? <laughs> uh, there's Tim Van Monero, the Primigian, Golang and React, VX, FX. 
Oh, what is VFX doing? Special effects Halloween skull prop. I eat espresso. Interesting. Hey. That's a little weird. <laughs> it's not that bad. It's not that bad, but it's a little weird. It's a little weird. Um, let's see. Science and technology. Um, web development. Collab code training? Docker JS React. Custom stream alerts. The Alt F4, F F4 stream. Seems interesting. <laughs> Go Arsenal. <laughs> All right, we're going to raid uh, the Alt F4 stream. <laughs> One last refresh. <laughs> uh, this guy's working on Docker, JS, React, custom stream alerts. Seems fun. <clears throat> so thanks, everyone, for participating in this experiment. I may, I may do something like that. If you see, like, a random Twitch account pop up, um, that's what happened. All right, I'm closing it. I'm closing it. Uh, there it is. <laughs> All right, all the code I wrote today, I am going to uh, push up. Um, let's see. Oh, I guess I can do that over here in the Twitch chat. Yeah, I can do that over here. Um, if you're still watching on YouTube, hello, there are 29 people watching on YouTube. Uh, come over to Twitch and we're going to raid the Alt F4 stream. But thanks everyone for watching. Thanks everyone for subscribing who has subscribed. I really appreciate it. 15,000 subscribers. Never thought it would happen. Um, if you followed on Twitch during the stream, stick around the, well, you're going to go to the, the raid, but, um, <laughs> stick around and you'll see the, um, uh, your name will pop up on the stream. Oh, look, that's my hair. Hair. You want to see how long my hair is? Ooh. Yeah. You've never seen that before. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks everyone for watching wherever you are in the world. Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night. And until next time, here's this. Mm -hmm.